Rainier Avenue Radio. Rainier Avenue Radio. Thông điệp này được gửi đến bạn bởi Bộ Y tế Công cộng Seattle và Quận Kinh, Bộ Y tế Washington, Washington Chapter AAP và Wilson Ridge. Cho dù lớp học của bạn ở đâu, dù trực tiếp hay trực tuyến, tiêm chủng định kỳ sẽ bảo vệ cho con của bạn tránh khỏi các bệnh nghiêm trọng như bệnh sởi, quay bị và thủy đậu. Và chúng giữ cho con của bạn được an toàn, khỏe mạnh và phát triển. Nếu cần trợ giúp tìm nhà cung cấp, hãy vào trang parenthealth123.org hoặc gọi đường dây nóng Help Me Grow Washington ở số 1-800-322-2588. Do you want to reach out to the Vietnamese community in Seattle? Just advertise in Người Việt Tây Bắc, that is Northwest Vietnamese News, the longest running Vietnamese language newspaper in our region. Go to nvnorthwest.com. Kind of nonsense conversation we're having here. The Neon Ghost Show. The Neon Ghost Show. Right here on Rainier. At, wait, what's it? Rainier Avenue Radio dot world. Right about now. Rainier Avenue Radio dot world. I'm so tired. I have to. <laughs> Are you a small business owner in Seattle who was impacted by COVID-19? The Seattle Office of Economic Development is investing $8 million dollars to connect small businesses to operating capital. The Small Business Capital Access Program will lower the cost of Washington State Small Business Flex Fund loans by paying down 25% of the loan principal. Eligible small businesses can borrow up to $150,000 with a 4% interest rate to cover expenses like payroll, rent, utilities, and supplies. If you or a family member are 55 or over and need nursing home level care but want to keep living where you are check out providence elder place pace this program offers health care housing transportation and recreational activities there are no co-pays or deductibles and it's covered through medicare and medicaid providence elder place pace works to keep you healthy and in your home call 206-320 Five three two five, or visit providence.org elder place providence.org elder place i'm paul pearson host of star time and when i'm not deep frying a turducken in a closed garage i'm listening to rainier avenue radio dot world one two get down What's up, big and little homies? This is Mas Vida Mara Ire, host of Seattle Sports Weekly on Test, test. All righty. We are on the air. We are here at Leon H. Brigham Field, also known as Seattle High School Memorial Stadium, dedicated to the memory of all Seattle High School students who gave their lives during World War II. All right, hey, it's a beautiful day. Uh, it's a fall day. We've got a major playoff game coming, Stanwood versus O'Day as the home team. Both teams have done very well in their respective division. Stanwood plays out of the Wesco 3A Wesco North. And of course, o O'Day plays out of the Metro 3A Metro Mountain Division, and their their record as of game time is nine and one, and Stanwood is ten and one, uh, based on what was been reported. Stanwood is favored, 59% favor to win. Uh, O'Day 31, 41%. O'Day kicks off. Ball is fielded deep at the five yard line, running back across the field. Getting to the 22-yard line. I don't have the relative sight, sight line, but it is Stanwood's ball at the 21, 20, I'm sorry, 26-yard line. 26-yard line, first and 10. As you look at your screen, Stanwood is team in white. They're going left to right. O'Day is in their home burgundy and gold. 
Stanwitz comes in in that wing T or offset T. It's off tackle, off tackle slant or off tackle dive. Gains about pretty close to three to four yards. Uh, all right, make it about a four yard, four yard gain. O'Day comes in and they, based on what we've seen, they run a four five. They may change that up and reduce the front. They may go to a three front, but they generally run a four five. Stan went in there, wing T, slot back, one wide out, left, a right, oh, off tackle. It's pretty much closed down for a very short game. Stanwood is basically a running team uh, based on what I see statistically um, and what was reported. And, of course, we all know uh, O'Day is a power team. They run the ball to set up the pass, and they pass. When they do pass, they're very effective. Stanwood, same way. They're running that split out left. They're running a T formation. It's actually now wing T, and they shut it down. It's uh, going to be short of the first down. It's going to be about fourth and about one and a half to two for the first down for Stanwood. So it is fourth down and about a yard to go. Stanwood is on their own thir 35. Big, big, big play in the first part of the game. It's going to be close. It looks like he may have gotten enough push to get the first. It is first down. So they move the ball. First down. 37-yard line. Stanwood in their own side of the field on their own 37. Again, O'Day runs at 4-5, four, 4-5 five, four, five with two high. Uh, they call it two high safeties or what they call Tampa 2 on the safeties, but it's basically 4-5-2. Or five, two. Stanwood in there still in their wing tee. Second man, so they got him for a loss. Uh, good penetration. So about a five, well, about a three-yard, four-yard loss. So make it second and four, second and thirteen. Everybody is playing true to form. Stan was coming out in their offense in their wing T or their offset T. And defensively, O'Day's running their their standard four five. Four five. They invert one one corner though. So Oh, he's gone. Touchdown. Stan, Stan with touchdown on an off tackle. It was just an off tackle blast. They sealed the outside. He cut back inside. Touchdown. About a 60-yard touchdown run. Stanwood lines up for their extra point. That score came with 8.29 to go in this first quarter. Kick looks up, and it's good. So it is. Stanwood 7, O'Day nothing. At 8.29 in the first quarter. Again, looking back on that play, it was a simple gut play, handoff. Look, looks like it was an off tackle slant. Uh, they uh, he blasted through the hole, got to the second level, and just outran everybody. Uh, again, O'Day was playing four five or four four uh, with the uh, you know two deep backs, and uh, Stan was able to bust it up the middle, get to that second level, and outrun the uh, the run support. 
So they're getting lined up for the kickoff. Again, if you're looking at your screen, Stanwood is in white going left to right. O'Day is in the dark uniform, burgundy and gold going right to left. In other words, going east to east to score. Stanwood went west to score. So short fielded at the oh he dropped it picked it up it up there oh he lost yardage he got to about the eleven or twelve it was a misplay on the on the reception so we first and ten O'Day at about the eleven looks like it's about the eleven yard line and we're in a, we're in shadows and the sun's in our face so. Uh, we pardoned the inaccuracy, and I don't have a spotter, so uh, I'm not going to be able to give you all the numbers uh, that we know. But we also know that uh, pretty much standard form, O'Day is going to come out, and uh, if it's true to form, uh, they're going to impose their will by the run, and they do. And Mr. Brown, right, as, uh, as I said... <laughs> O'Day will impose the will with the run, and that's exactly what they did. They got about a 25, 35, 25, 28-yard run on that handoff. Just a simple handoff. Yeah, 22 yards. First down for O'Day on their 38-yard line, 37-yard line. Same split backs. Direct handoff, off tackle. He's got about four or five yards. Again, nothing fancy. They're not going to fool you. O'Day is going to run it. They're going to power you. They're going to run those split backs. They will throw the ball exactly when you start creeping up to stop the run, and that's what's going to happen. But so far, they are imposing the will on the run. That's 27, almost 30 yards on two plays. Rollout pass. Oh, off the hands. Uh, they did a rollout, which is a, a good call. Tight end missed the ball. It was overthrown a little bit. And we got a penalty. A sideline warning. Sideline warning against O'Day. So it's third down. Threw down in about six. Ball is at a little bit above the 41 yard line of O'Day. Ball's on about the 41. O'Day comes by uh, formation. They're in the eye. They're in the eye formation. Two splits wide, left and right. Mr. Brown with the ball. He's got an open field. And it looks like he is gone all the way. That was a 59, almost 60-yard run. Simple handoff, off-tackle slant. He just outran the defense. So there you go. Two teams that strike very fast. Two teams that, again, impose their will. Of course, O'Day runs the ball with reckless abandon, as they say. And Stanwood also runs the ball. So it's going to be... It's going to be an interesting contest. Pretty, pretty evenly matched with respect to what two teams like to do. Uh, again, we watched O'Day all year. They do run the ball. They, they maximize their, their possession of the ball by running and eating up the clock. Extra point is up, and it's good. So we are tied with seven minutes and 29 seconds left. A little bit more than half this quarter gone. The score is seven to seven. Stanwood High School playing out of the West Coast. And of course, O'Day High School playing out of the Metro Mountain Division. Seven to seven. Both 3A teams have been rated in the top top 10 in the uh, state 3A uh, uh, ratings, rankings. Stanwood beat Ferndale. Ferndale is playing Eastside Catholic today. And so they come both out of the West Coast. And uh, 
one beat the other to get here, and that was Stanwood who, who defeated uh, Fernwood to get here to play O'Day. So seven minutes and 29 seconds left. The score is 7-7, and if I can make a prediction, we haven't seen the end of the scoring, I don't think, folks. It's going to be fairly, fairly uh, – I wouldn't be surprised if both teams score double digits in terms of – for sure – in terms of scoring. So getting ready to kick off O'Day again. On As you look at the screen, on your right, we'll be kicking off going to the east. Stanwood takes the ball, on, and they'll be going west. They're on your left side of the screen. Ball's fielded at the 15. He's got room. He's making it to the outside. He got all the way up to the 42 or 43 yard line, which is a pretty good return. That was some 30 yards on the return. And that was number 24, and I'm going to try to get his name. But um, again, I don't have a spotter, so I'm going to kind of guess at it or just mention there's a, a Stanwood guy scoring or a Stanwood guy getting a first down or whatever yards. So the Spartans, that Stanwood Spartans start at their own 39, first and 10. They got about a 25-yard return or more. They're in their split. They're in their offset. Again, offset T with the wing back. They're coming off that side where they have their slot back uh, or wing back. Uh, people call him flanker back, and he looks like he's the one that leverages outside in in terms of the blocking because that was about a five-yard game. So it makes a second and five on the 44 for Stanwood. They come, they're split, split ride left. Again, they're in that offset T, almost like a single, like a wing T, I mean. Okay, that oh they shut that one down again. They take a they were coming off tackle, direct handoff. He gained about uh, maybe a yard and a half, so it's third down and about three to go for Stanwood. Again, you're listening to Rainier Avenue Radio dot World bringing you W I A A Class Three A Football Championship Playoff. Here at Leon H. Brigham Field in downtown Seattle, also known as Seattle High School Memorial Stadium. Okay, O'Day's come with a five-man front. Oh, they gained enough. Got about a six-yard run off again, off tackle. Nothing, nothing fancy. These teams are not doing anything fancy. They're not trying to fake anybody. They're not running counters. They're running direct handoff. You got this a slant or a gut play or a blast play. Either way, it's just base football, basic football. I see where O'Day has changed up, and they're running a five-man front. So they've added one more on the front line, uh, probably to neutralize the run, but they're running a five. Yep. It's 5-4, five, 5-4, four. Five, four, two high safeties. Second man handoff, and they got it. Oh, got him. Got him for about a one or two yard gain. So it's about a one yard gain. Uh, Oday reacted well. Again, they changed their defense. They're running a five four two, two high safeties. I want to get a co confirmation of five four two, right? Yep, they're in the five, five, four, two. Uh -oh, somebody's offside, I think, or somebody moved. So we got a penalty. Play stop. I think I think it's going to be an illegal motion. Yeah, illegal procedure. False start on uh, Stanwood. So it'll be a five-yard penalty. That will make it second and 14 if the penalty is accepted. Yeah, it was illegal motion, illegal procedure. So 
again, ladies and gentlemen, we got Stan Wood of the West Coast versus O'Day from the Metro Mountain Division playing off in the 3A classification tournament. Brought to you by Rainier Avenue Radio and WIAA. Stan Wood motion right. We're going to run him down. Not a, no. O'Day showed quite a bit of speed right there to run down a play. Looked like it was open. Looks like they had collapsed that side. Um, but they were able to run him down for a probably a short game, but there was a loss on that pen, because of the penalty. And so now it's, again, third down in about, I think, 14. Third down and 14 to go. And with three minutes and 52 seconds left, the score is O'Day 7, Stanwood 7. Stanwood is still in their same set. One split wide right. Off that offset to you, direct handoff. Off tackle, stopped. Very short game, maybe a four-yard game. O'Day's reacting, and they looks like they're still running that 5-4-2. Five, five on the front, down defensive lineman, four run support, and two high safeties. So we're in punt formation. Stanwood will be kicking from their 50, or from the 50. A little bit of a high snap, short kick. It is bouncing around. Oh, it went out of bounds at about the 30 or 29 of O'Day. It's a relatively, about a 25, 30-yard kick. Fairly, fairly short. All right, so first and 10 for O'Day. At their own 30. First and 10 at the 30. O'Day, again, going to the east goalpost, east end zone. O'Day in the burgundy and gold, Stanwood in the white and red. Pitch off. About a short, well, about a four or five, three or four yard gain. This is Mr. Brown, Jason Brown. I think it's. Jason Brown Jr. So I'm going to let the <laughs> so second and seven. O'Day with the ball on their own 33. Direct handoff. Breaking through. Almost broke it. Got into that secondary. Well over a 10 yard run. Again, direct handoff, nothing fancy, just blast. What we call off tackle blast, off tackle gut, um, straight up. Nothing fancy, no you, no picking in the backfield, no counter action, nothing. Straight handoff, dive. We can call a lot of things. Uh, eye formation, split, split receivers left and right. Hesitation run, uh, again, that's... Jason Brown Jr., a sh very short game. So second down and eight. Second and eight. Ball on the 49. O'Day's 49. Second and eight. I formation. I think uh, the Stanwood jump, neutral zone infraction. Neutral zone infraction is a five yard penalty. You know, the rule of thumb is hey, if you don't know the count and you're playing defense and you try to guess, don't do it. Wait till the ball snapped. Same way on offense. If you lose and forget to count, just wait till the ball is snapped. I formation. Second man. Oh, got him for a loss. Welcome. Right. Yep. Jay Yeezy. Yes. I'm trying to do an it. adequate job that of play by play, but I'm falling short. Jay Yeezy. Yes. Uh, beautiful day for football. Yes, it is. 50 seconds left in the first half. The score is tied 7 to 7. 
Wish you were here. Oh, you are here. Oh, thank you. <laughs> O'Day with the Split ball. Back. Oh, at they the changed 50. the formation. Oh, it's a drops back to pass. Finds his receiver yeah, at the first, seven. Yeah. That is going to be a first down, and that's a completion yeah. to Antonio Reggio. They should have known. Stan we should have known something. They ran split back. They changed the formation. Oh, actually, that was Javaris <laughs> yeah, Matthews. Javaris Matthews, right. Javaris Matthews with the reception. Yeah. O'Day uh, marching the ball downfield now at the 39-yard line of Stanwood. 20 seconds to go in this quarter. I formation split. Dana hands the ball off inside. Old. Nice run inside. Nice inside running there by O'Day, John. And yeah. as, as you know, that's what they're, they're going to do. Yes, exactly. It's, it's about a half a yard shy of the first down. That'll make it second and about half a yard to go for O'Day. Tony, play by play was easy. You know why? Because all O'Day does is run. And most of the time, that's all Stan, Stan would do is run. So it was fairly easy. So, But I am sure glad you're here for the play-by-play. -play. <laughs> so at the end of one, Jay Yeezy, um, basically the same place it was at the start of the game. We're all tied up. Yep. And basically the scores were similar. They just ran off tackle, simply outran the defense into the end zone. Both teams. Both teams. I would give the advantage to O'Day with respect to team speed. But uh, Stanwood, based on what I saw in the scouting report and looking at the films, they do throw the ball. They can move the ball. On the, they've got a guy that's, uh, what, racked up 1,677 yards. So that's 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 pretty decent. So you see my signal now? Yeah, that's Mr. All right, here we come. Uh, second quarter action. Yep. Uh, that's a Ryder Bumgarner, 1,677 yards. He's a mass during this football year. Okay. High formation. Hand off to Jason Brown outside the Makes right tackle, back. runs. Yeah. Picks up about again the first down first with down. a pickup of about six or seven, John. And yeah. O'Day is on the move down to the yeah. 23 yard line of Stanwood. Nothing fancy. I mean, it would be a surprise. They did throw one pass. They <laughs> did. Pass. They did. Yeah. Did I, and I missed it. Yes, you missed it. I mean, that might be it for the, the game. <laughs> but they run the ball. They, there's no question. Uh, like I said, they made it easy for play by play. I couldn't call the number of the jerseys, but it was easy the fact they run. First down at the 24-yard line. Pitch to Brown. Brown outside again. The left tackle, off tackle. Just off the left tackle. Another pickup, John, of about six, seven yards. That hole was so big, I could have walked through it. Well, I could have limped through it, you know. But and it, you know, it that big. would be Yasutaki the elder yes. who said he could run through that hole. Yasutaki the younger will be with us for the East Side game, yes. East Lake game. And uh, John, east side, east side Catholic. East, east side. Yeah, I was right the first time. East yes, side Catholic. Yes, you were. I shouldn't have Freudian, doubted had myself. A, you had a Freudian slip there. I formation, <laughs> two splits on the Dana under the line. center. Dana hands the ball Ooh. off inside and a Net head on. powerful running yep. Yep. Uh, inside. Gained about a yard, a couple, of, couple, three yards. Again, uh, John, no surprise. Nothing. Uh, Nothing. Let's say... Uh, Three yards in a cloud of dust. Yes, well, three <laughs> yards in a cloud of astroturf. But, hey, either way, again, I, I mean, the book on, on Ode Monty, bless you, you don't change it much. It's easy to follow you. You're going to run the ball. Either I formation or you run that split back set. Uh, like I said, here you go. You're running a split back set. So we've now. got two backs in the backfield. Deanna under the center. Deanna does hand the ball off. There Jason Brown cuts inside, picks up picks the first, first down. down. Yep. With a couple more to spare, that's going to be close to a goal to go effort. It might be a little short, a little short, a little short. And they'll Tony. be able to pick up a first down here just before the end zone. Uh, nothing fancy, just direct handoff, either off tackle, off that O hole, A go, M gap, whatever. It, it's nothing fancy. And, uh, you know, Stanwood has yet to stop it. You are listening to Rainier Avenue Radio Dot World, our broadcast of high school football from Leon H. Brigham Field Memorial Stadium, 
first down. I Still the sure. opportunity to get a first down. Set up in the eye. Deanna back to pass. Looks to the right side. Has a receiver open. Touchdown. Oh, day, John. And they yeah. just had everybody sucked up on they, that play, well, on that run play action. Exactly. And the big tight end was yeah. open for a touchdown. Deanna hit him. Yeah. And that's 13 yeah. for old day. Now, they passed. Yeah, they passed because, <laughs> well, it's like this. You set up the pass through the run, and play action only works if you run the ball effectively, and that's exactly what they did. And they let the tight end leak out, and they didn't even cover him. There wasn't anybody within 10 yards of that uh, eligible receiver. Uh, that's how bad they, they want to stop the run. They're crowding the line of scrimmage. So extra point coming up here. Well, ex well executed. Yes. Mr. Yasutaki snap good. is here. The hold is good. The okay. kick is up. The kick is good. The referees confirm. Yep. O'Day now on top, 14-7 to 7 with 9.36 here to go mm -hmm. in the first half. And a well-executed drive, John. Run, 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 run. They get the ball down to the 11-yard line, get that run option right. going again, pull it back, and hit the wide receiver. Yep. And as you said, wide open. open. I mean, wide open. Uh, it, 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 it was so easy. It just seemed like uh, it was there, uh, as they say, like a piece of cake. And here you go. O'Day is not favored to win. The chance to win has favored Stanwood. 60% to O'Day, 40%. And that's what the prognosticator is saying. But these are young men who are playing with emotions. They have skills. Anything can happen. So right now... O'Day is leading in an upset, 14 to 7. Well, uh, Stanwood ranked number 11. O'Day ranked number three in 3A in the state, John. And you're saying the uh, odds makers, the odds odds makers, makers are said, saying Stanwood yeah, is favored. Stanwood favored, 59, 60% to O'Day, 41 or 40%. I couldn't believe it either. Uh, of course, you know. Um, this was Mac. Uh, I won't mention the name, but this was that reporting service. And uh, kickoff is up to the forty. He's up to the forty-five and tackled on the forty-five. Nice return there. Yeah, and I know, uh, I, know what, I know what Coach Roberts is saying. Preston Turner on the return there for Stanwood. Nice return, but uh, Coach Al Roberts of O'Day is saying too many yards. <laughs> North well, Adam. not if not if you're a Stanwood Spartan well, fan. I, I know, <laughs> but me knowing Al Roberts. And the fact that he's a guru and a, a special teams guru, uh, he's saying too many yards. Stanwood now will start at the 45-yard line. Good field position for Stanwood. They haven't changed their formation to do that. Again, lining up under the center with two backs in the yep. backfield. Tight formation. Second Hand man. off over the left tackle. Is good. He's got some running room. And that's yep. going to be a first down, John, yep. for uh, the Stanwood Spartans is, again, they – uh, appear to be able to run the ball effectively as well. Yeah, they're running off that, what we I call an offset tee. It's almost like a wing tee, but it isn't. It's a tee formation with the quarterback under center, and they have a, a flanker back or a setback, and they have two split backs, but they uh, cheat to one side or the other. They cheat left or they cheat right, and that's the side they run. Carson Beck picks up the first down with 11 yards, actually 10 yards. They give him the first down, though. So, so again, go. Custer... Under the center, two backs in the backfield. Again, tight formation, but we've got to call John before the snap. Yeah, and again, they're in that offset T. They've got an extra blocker sitting down there like a flanker, and they got the backs canted to that side. Uh, and like I said, they're do nothing fancy. They may give it to the second man through, but it's still a uh, very base offense, uh, just a simple handoff, direct handoff, off tackle, okay. off tackle slant. Uh, you call it a give. You call it a blast. All right, here we go. Again, same formation, Stanwood. tight line. Handoff inside, and a good defensive play there, and Ryder Bumgarner stopped. He'll pick up a couple yards, John. Um, I know you like anything that's positive yardage. Oh, yeah, but this guy, 1,677 yards he gained in this year, a 10-game season. That's a lot of yards. Five nine senior, yeah. Ryder Bumgarner. Yeah, Ryder Bumgarner, sixteen hundred and seventy seven yards as a running back. Second down and eight now for Stanwood, trailing fourteen to seven. Yeah, running tight, eight, tight just line. over eight minutes to excuse, go. Excuse me, Tony. Tight line, wing back, 
And again, uh, under the center is Wyatt Custer. Custer again, hands off. Ball is on the ground. O'Day has it. O'Day with the ball Dead at the 48-yard line. And that ball was recovered after it was put on the um, put on the carpet. Yep. I couldn't see. And it looks like that was uh, Cole Zilmer. It was either Cole okay. Zilmer or Tucker Ashcraft, both listed as yeah. number uh, 18. But I believe that was Cole Zilmer, senior middle linebacker, who recovered that ball for O'Day. And so good reaction because the, the back was on it, and uh, he was able to get it, the O'Day player. So Stanwood was on the move, again, yeah. with the ball on the ground and the turnover, John. And yep. we've said this all season long. When it gets to this point of the season, you can't do that. Mistakes will kill Jason you. Jason Brown around the right side, flag oh, down. Gonna he's going to pick up about a yard or two, but there's a flag down. And so he's already pointing to O'Day, and they're going to bring that one back. It's going to be probably a hold or an illegal block, something like that. But as you watch, you, you, you watch uh, Jason Brown, he, he probes. He's looking for gaps, and he's got enough speed and quickness. Yeah, it's a hold. Uh, he has enough speed and quickness and reaction to make those cuts. Uh, that's what makes him a re really difficult runner to bring down, a really good runner. And as they say, John, he's also a load. Yes. <laughs> oh, yeah, you can't arm tackle him. <laughs> Okay, so that'll be first down and 20 now for Split. O'Day. Deanna, uh, again, under the center. Split, Split back. backfield. Drops back to pass again. Looks to the left side. Looks downfield. The big tight, un tight end is open, but uh, but uh, Deanna overthrows him. He had his man wide yeah. open, John, with open. nothing but green in front of him. He's running it out to the sideline, and uh, which is a safe pass. You lead him to the sideline, and uh, he just kind of overthrew him over the top. Um, you know, and that's the second time he's thrown the ball over the top and missed the receiver. He's putting too much air under it. So that's what, the fourth, third or fourth pass that they've thrown today? Really interesting. One is a touch, one was a touchdown, so. Second and 10 now for O'Day. Uh, this time, Deanna lines up in the shotgun. Second and 20, actually. Deanna back to pass. It's a quarterback draw up the middle. Not a whole lot of room. Breaks a couple tackles. We've got a flag down, I think, John. A nice like pickup there of about 12 yards yep. if everything stands. No, they're going to say that's a pickup of about 10. They're going to call him down. Then yeah, it, curtail it, the forward roll. At the 50. But, but he that's made still up, a pickup of about 12. Right, he made up all that yardage. And that looked like, a John, a design quarterback it, it draw was, up it, the middle. It was, and they changed their formation. They went to split backs with the shotgun. Now they're back to their they're back to their eye. Deanna under the center with the eye formation. Jason Brown in the back. Jason Brown doesn't get the ball. Pass downfield to the big tight end again, and the reception by number eighteen. Right on the money. First down. Uh, the dilemma that Stanwood is going to be facing is: Do we sell out on the run, or do we play soft and watch out for the pass? If you play soft and watch out for the pass they're going to run the ball on you and they're going to run it down your throat there's cole no zimmer yep, cole uh the big wide receiver out there yep. i'm calling him a tight end but they've got him listed no, as wide receiver no. a run inside the number 28 and that's going to be for a short yardage uh to sean or excuse me quinn white six yep. foot junior blast straight up but the, still yeah. a pickup john of a couple more yeah. yards is positive yardage Straight ahead blast. Pick up of fancy. about three or four. That'll make it second and seven. And 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 I, I don't know, John, that, that play action pass to uh, mm -hmm. the, tight uh, end, the, yeah. the tight end. Uh, again, they have him listed as wide receiver. But uh, that, that pass uh, seems to be working effective. Yeah. Yep. Well, again, they're, they're, they're Deanna out. under the center. Deanna hands the ball off There's inside. A Lots oh, of running yep. room. Yep. Again, for the old day player. It was a big hole there on that right side. And that looked like Dan Camacho, number yep. 11. They're running either eye formation or split backs. They ran one shotgun, but everything else is pretty standard stuff. Uh, and, again, the, the premier carrier of the ball, of the pill, is Mr. Brown. So, again, watch out for him. 
third down, two yards to go. O'Day on the 29 of Stanwood inside hand off to that guy you just mentioned. Brown, he breaks free. He's clear and just got him as Jason yep. Brown. A pickup of about yep. 14 yards, and that's going to take the ball all the way down once again and deep into the about red 12, zone, 12, about yeah. the 12-yard line of Stanwood, the Stanwood Spartans. And, John, you're right. O'Day just apparently has them caught up in the mix. No. Yeah. Is they, they, you, get, you can't <laughs> – like I said, I'm getting tongue-tied. If you get – you line up to stop the run, you're going to give something up. If you try to stop the pass, you're going to give up the run. You can't, you know, like I said, running is the one you want to Deanna stop. Deanna under the center. Pitch, pitch to the left side. Goes to Jason open. Brown. Brown to the He's left. In. Brown into the end zone. Makes a nice cut. There's a flag down. I think that was after the touchdown, but there is a flag down. Yeah. So as it stands now, Brown put that foot in the ground. Made that cut. Made that cut and essentially went in untouched. Yes, he did. The hole was there and it was open. And what are they calling? Yasutaki the Elder, may you have been able to run through that hole. They got holding. Okay, so they... No, no, no take, response, John. You couldn't have made that one, huh? No, no, I couldn't have made that one. <laughs> well, he made a cut. You know, he can't... He, made, he did make a nice cut. Yeah. They're going to call that back, though. Yeah, call it back. No, no touchdown, so it's going to be holding. And it'll be from the point of the, the hold, so uh, that's going to make it first down now, again, in about... 13 to go at about the 18 well yeah hold it let me see yeah that's at about the 16, 16 yard, line. yard line exactly i formation two splits left so and again right. deanna under the center and again hands the ball off to brown brown on the right side probing cuts back the other way turns and spins around mm -hmm. and does end up getting some positive yards out of it uh john and yeah. stanwood had that covered and had him blanketed pretty well yeah, but if you looked at how they covered that, they had nine guys up there to stop the run. You know what that tells me? Play action, fake that ball, throw the ball over the top. I mean, again, you can't you can't effectively cover both uh, with as talent uh, as much talent as what they have. And again, Deanna under the center as he usually is, fakes the handoff inside, looks for a receiver. And, uh, John, a little miscommunication yeah. at first. He uh, had him going to the right side, didn't take it, had right. good protection, spun to the left in the end zone, and if you would and have Deanna looked, yeah. missed uh, the if, pass again. If we were to look to the right, Jason Brown was wide open. Nobody was on him. And I think they caught roughing the passer. And they thought, did yeah. call roughing the passer. passer. John, he had a lot of time back yeah, there. Yeah, he did. And then finally got the pass off and was hit, and albeit late. Right. And that will give O'Day a first down in the market, I believe, half the half distance. Half the distance, so it'll be first to the and goal. goal. It'll be first and goal. But uh, again, Jason Brown was wide open. Everyone was leaning to the right. He was wide open. He came out like a swing back out of the backfield. And that's going to be first down at about the eight yard line. Make that the seven and a half. Okay. Uh, let so me make this a, will be yeah. first and goal. Let me do some uh, uh, prognostication here. Brown up the middle. Brown off tackle. Brown around the end. Do we have a burger on this? Yes. Deanna lines up under the center. Split backs. Brown gets the ball over the right side. Brown into the end zone. Brown with the touchdown. John off that right tackle. I said Brown left. Brown right. Brown up the middle. Brown everywhere. Hey, uh, did we better hamburger on that one? Well, there was a burger on the line. Okay. I'll take a, and it took one play yeah, yeah. for Jason Brown to make Nostradamus out of you. Yeah, right. Uh, easy, easy to predict. Uh, give me a uh, – I'll take a quarter pounder without cheese, okay? I'm, watch, I am, I'm watching my diet. I am, I am one burger up on you, John. Oh, that's right. We are I, I take that back. calling this through the season. Yeah. And right. there's a snap. The hold is down. The kick is up. The it kick is good. Is good and that's going to put O'Day up 21-7. to 7. Which is a surprise. Uh, John, I, 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 I got to say, if, yeah. if if you have read somewhere that O'Day was an underdog, okay. But I, I number 11 O'Day, or excuse me, number 11 Stanwood, number 3 O'Day, I think this game is turning out just pretty much how everybody in the Metro League thought it would. Mm -hmm. So well, far, yeah. a lot of football to play, though. To be, to, yeah, to be precise, Stanwood was favored 
in, uh, you know, 59% chance to win. John, what is your source? We just want to know. Ma Ma uh, I don't like to mix mention them, but they're called Max Prep. Uh, that might be a fan vote. It might be. It don't matter. That's what I got. And, uh, again, uh, O'Day was not favored. They Their chance to win was 41%. Well, that's yeah. that's why we line them up and we play and the game. Play that's, the game. Was, that's why we play the game. And you know what? What's my percentage of getting a date with Beyonce? Zero. Okay, that's all I need to know. O'Day lines up now, ready to kick off. Three fifty-three here to go in the half. Up twenty-one to seven. There's the seven. kick, and that's a it's short kick. Around. It bounces, fielded at about the twenty-two, and then run out of bounds Watch at about the twenty-nine the yard line. This is a complete turnaround from what I think people were predicting. Uh, and yeah, that might have been a fan vote, but you know, well, you know, you know, fan is short for fanatic, so so I guess you may be right, Daniel. So six one one fifty five Max Mayo on the yep. short return there. Ball at about the twenty six, maybe the twenty seven yard line, just shy of the twenty seven yard line. Stanwood on the move again, again that fumble and yep. Uh, O'Day methodically moves the ball down the field. That penalty doesn't help. Stanwood off to, off to the right side. Second man. Second man with the ball. Yep. And but, O'Day covers it pretty well. Yep. And so, you know, again, uh, that's why you play the game. Young These young people play with emotion. You never know what's going to happen. Uh, the, the fact is, if they are fairly well matched, the team that makes – the fewest mistakes, penalties and, and fumbles and interceptions. That's the team that will prevail. Once again, you're listening to Rainier Avenue Radio dot world. Wyatt Custer, Stanwood under the center, two backs in the backfield, handoff inside, and they Here's like Stanford. to run the ball as well. And uh, again, uh, a, a few yards in a cloud of dust, or as John would say, a cloud of astral turf, but that's going to move it up to about third and, Mm, three and a half. Uh, three and a half, yeah. Third and three. Uh, the, the, the problem with Stanwood, if uh, they're resigning to running, uh, you don't have a whole lot of time. If O'Day gets the ball back and puts another seven on the board, that really puts you in a bind because you're not going to have a whole lot of time. Custer uh, back in the shotgun this time with third and yeah. three. Yeah. Actually under the center, two backs in the backfield, pitch. and they do what they do, pitch. And that's going to be good for first down. He might get some more. Tried to run over people. That was, uh, again, I think that was Ryder Bumgarner. Bumgarner looks like it, yeah. That is Ryder Bumgarner, and a nice pickup for yep. Bumgarner. And, again, Stanwood moving the ball. Yep. They, it was, John, as you say, the mistake yep. that cost him. Oh, they took that down, and instead of Stanwood looking at being 14-14, to -14, they're now down 21-7. Yep. And just two minutes left here to go in the first half. Same setup. Wing Custer T under the center. Hands off to the Austin. left side. Good. Hit in the backfield. Actually pick up of maybe about a half a yard. About or a half a yard. No game yep. at all. Yep. And um, it was pretty pretty apparent. O'Day is going to try to stop their run. They're Carson Beck. Stop their run. Forced Six foot, 185-pound senior. One of the duo backfield for Stanwood. That'll make it second and about nine. So again, two backs in the backfield. Again, Custer under the center. One receiver to the left side. Okay, There's a man five. in motion. Yeah. Hand up right up the gut. Bumgarner. Bumgarner's close to the first down. We'll see where they mark it. They'll probably mark it. It looks like, John, uh, uh, about yard a short. half a yard half a short. Yeah. And uh, uh, they ran right to OJ's five front, uh, which was stopping them, uh, uh, you know. And so we've got a timeout on the field now for Stanwood with 112 left in the first half. O'Day up 21 to 7. We're going to go to Mr. Daniel Bellis for an update. Uh, yeah, thank you. Uh, it is uh, a quite an interesting game on the other side over there in Yelm. Uh, the Tornadoes are actually not blowing away their opponent, Kennewick Lions. Um, Kennewick actually just put in their first score of the game. So on the screen, you see it's 14 0. Kennewick is. Uh, has put in a touchdown 14-7 in the second quarter, but they are holding the uh, most highest scoring team in all of 3A that has put up 55.9 points a game with only 14 points in the first half. Kennewick 
east yeah. of the mountains. We we like Kennewick. Yeah, second I mean, second we, place. We like, we like Yelm too. But yeah, we, but we we like Kennewick. We Kennewick like- came in last year and beat two highly rated teams, Eastside Catholic and O'Day, and went on to almost pull off the big upset against Bellevue last year. And then came back champions. this year, John and. Yeah. Beat Rainier Beach and yeah. whoa, was that a good game? Yes, it was. That was a good down, game. Down to the wire. Okay. O'Day and, called the timeout. And, and they O'Day's, changed the defense. O'Day's yep. calling the timeout. And then it was the same way, John. Yeah. Um Kennewick uh did a great job of stopping a, a high a high powered Rainier Beach offense. Even if they don't move the ball consistently, they still come up with big plays. But yeah, they shut O'Day, the, the, our, Kennewick did a good job. They did what was expected in terms of shutting down. Scott Trey Humphrey, basically. Um, and it did it didn't help that uh Beach did not have chance squad as for most of the game. He had yeah, that he had that injury, left but, ankle injury. But again, mistakes. Two offsides, a ten yard and oh, ten yards of penalties. Boy, mistakes. Gave and well as an unsportsmanlike conduct forced Randy Beach to go with a pass which got tipped and intercepted, and that's how they scored. Then two offside penalties gave Kennewick, 10 yards, uh, plus 10 yards, or minus 10 yards, they had 10 yards less to kick a field goal, yeah. which won the game. They were potentially in field goal range. Because they were behind. Yeah, they were behind. Took them out of the game. Yeah, yeah. And, uh, yeah. again, those penalties. Stanwood, again, lines up with three backs in the backfield this eye. time. They were in a power eye. Custer under the center. Custer to the second man through. Immediately grabs. Slips away, though, yeah. and picks up the first down. So a chance. He grabbed them, but a uh, pickup of about four, and that will be good for a first down. 106 here to go but, in the half. But here you go. Here's the dilemma. You've got uh, better than 35, 30, almost 40 yards to go to score. If you're going to run the ball, you're going to eat up a lot of that clock. And, again, Stanwood does throw the ball, but their, their bread and butter is run. 1,677 yards for Ryder Baumgartner. That's a lot of yards. 50 seconds. Baumgartner. Hands the ball off to the left side again, keeping the ball on the ground. That clock is still running. Pickup of yep. about four, maybe five. Yep. 39 seconds, and it looks like we're going to get a timeout call, John. Yeah, Stanwood has one timeout left after this one. And so, so with the ball at the 34-yard line, John, 39 seconds to go. Uh, they're going to have to dial something up here. Yep in order to uh, take advantage of this field position they have in the first half. Exactly. With 39 seconds left and the ball on the 34-yard line um, and a timeout on the field, you are listening to Rainier Avenue Radio. Well, it's me, Tony B., with the coach, Jay Yeezy. Thank you, Tony, on this wonderful fall day. You say, gee, maybe I should be out in the woods with all – meeting with all the flora and fauna, or maybe I should be out on my yacht. Well, I, I'll tell you, John, uh, Washington. CEO Evans, Roger and I just got back from Tulsa where ah. we thought it was cold until the plane took us to Chicago. <laughs> my hometown, <laughs> Chicago, Chicago. Then. And then Chicago we had hometown. a new definition of cold. Of cold. Oh, yes. Oh, I'm telling you, John, I was bundled up and I felt like I was naked. The wind <laughs> just cut through. Baumgartner pitched to the right, or excuse me, Baumgartner back to pass. Baumgartner has a man deep in the end zone. Looking back, he should have kept running. He would have had that ball, and that was Max Mayo, I believe. But Custer pitches the ball to Baumgartner. Baumgartner stops on the right side, fires the pass downfield. Max Mayo was looking back instead of running forward. He had to look back. Running back pass or half-back pass. But like I said, we had to do, they had to do something. They don't have yeah. enough time to run the ball straight up. Odell has been pretty effective shutting off the run. So I, I can't fault Bum Garner too much. No. He's not he's not a quarterback, but that was a pretty good looking pass from the running back. Yeah, but it was a little too a little, little long. A little again, long. Again, uh, they have to get on the board because Odell gets the kickoff second half. Oh, and got so now, yeah. uh, now Custer's in the shotgun with third down. Forward. Custer looks to the left side, can't find anybody. Does have a seizure, throws it up high, and that's going to be short of the first down. They yeah. will call that a catch. That's going to make it fourth down now from the 30, John, which will make it about a 47-yard field goal yeah. if they elect to go that route. you got 25 seconds left. you got two yards to go for the first down. 
25 seconds, and the clock is running. It was stopped because it was uh, out of bounds, but uh, the, clock, the, the clock is at 25 seconds. However, the game clock is running. The game clock, or excuse me, the field clock is now at 8, 7, 6. Two yards to go for the first down under the center. Hand off to Bumgarner, breaks through, has some running room, breaks the tackle. And again, John, yeah. uh, they had him in the backfield. In the backfield. But wrap him Bumgarner up. breaks through the line. He, he, Like I said, he's rushed for 1,677 yards. He is not going to go down with an arm tackle. You're going to have to wrap him up. And, and it's going to be more than one guy. Uh, and down, okay. on the, down on the field, excuse me, John, is Jeremiah Johnson, 5'11", 240-pound senior, who is a tackle. And I'm, I'm sure an instrumental part of making yeah, they this run off tackle. Spartans – yeah. Ground attack, go 5'11", 240. Yep, he's kind of the chunk, <laughs> as they say. Um, you know, but hey, they run effectively off tackle, both teams. Uh, and that is your offensive line. You got some of the heavy hitters on the end, well, tackle. Uh, and some people, bump runners yeah. up and uh, walking very gingerly. Oh, on on oh, that, that right does leg. Not look good. He can so he can't put his full weight on it. No, nope, he can't put his full weight on it. Off the field. However, yeah. Stanwood does pick up the first down. Still 25 yards to go. 19 seconds left. And Tony. with with that penalty, John, does that force uh, Stanwood to use their final timeout, or is that a referee's timeout? That's a referee's timeout, I believe. Yeah, yeah. They have one left. Well, they're going to have to try to get something on the board if it's a field goal. So they added a second yeah. to the clock. So and instead of 19 seconds, John, it's 20. we have one more second. Yep, 20 seconds to the end of this quarter to halftime. So now what is it? Uh, are you playing for a field goal or are you playing for a touchdown? Uh, either way, you you got a little bit of a distance to kick the ball. Stanwood comes out fired up to the line of scrimmage. And the referee before the yep. snap. Yep. Oh, they called timeout because there I didn't be think they were. Out. Yeah, I didn't think they were uh, uh, too cognizant of the setup that uh, Stanwood came out with. Uh, in other words, they showed a, so, something that they were not necessarily uh, comfortable with. So they uh, called timeout. You are listening to Rainier Avenue Radio Dot World. I want to invite everyone to join us at eleven o'clock on Monday. Uh, Rainier Beach is under construction, John. I'm sure you know that. Yes. And the campaign is called Build the Beach for Us, By Us. We'll be getting an update from Pat McLaughlin of uh, Lydig, the construction company, to tell us what's taking place, how they're working with the community, and what positions, jobs, openings there are during instruction for members of the community. And we'll find out if there's also some intern possibly. John, we're going to find out everything that's going on with the rebuild of Rainier Beach High School that's at 11 o'clock to 1130 on Monday. Pat McLaughlin, make sure and join us to find That's out great. more. That's great. It's about time. RB needs to be rebuilt. We are your community radio station. Um, Rainier Beach eliminated last week by Kenwood, who is now down in Yelm, facing the highest scoring team in 3A. But we are up here at Memorial Stadium. Shotgun. Puster in the runs around. He's in the shotgun, runs to the right side. That little field in front of him fires a pass to the end zone, well covered. And that's going to be incomplete in the end zone it was on the back line it, it had very little chance of getting there and john that play took a long time to develop yes, we now did. have nine seconds left yep. on the clock ball is at the 25 yard line uh maybe you got a chance for another play but you better get out of bounds or they do still have that one time out left yeah, right they do right but, you know, well, that is, that play took a long time to develop and he ran around in the backfield and shotgun again. Double wide receivers on both sides, left and right. Cluster in the shotgun. Cluster looks to the left side, looks to the right side, fires a pass. And that doesn't go to anybody. There was miscommunication there on what that route was supposed to be. And, he and took the, a hit. Um, uh, Max Mayo cut to the right side and it looked like. Cluster was expecting him to go to the end zone. And he took a hit. He took a hit. That ball, <laughs> the ball and the quarterback left each other. 
but the quarterback <laughs> left the ball because he was hit by an old day defender. Uh, pretty good, pretty solid hit. So we'll have a 32, 42 yard field goal attempt. The snap, the kick is up. It looks like it's a little short, John, little short. and the referees waved it yep. off. He needed about three more yards. Yep. He was on target. It he was, was on a low target. trajectory kick. Low. And that's going to do yep. it for the half at the end of the first half of quarter final action. The old day high school football team 21. The Stanwood High School football Spartans 7. We are going to take it now to Mr. Daniel Bellis. All right, take it away, Dan, for a halftime update. That's right, here at the half of Memorial Stadium on Rainer Avenue Radio. I'm Daniel Bellis with your halftime report. And uh, the number three seeded O'Day Fighting Irish, a couple of touchdowns over to Stanwood uh, Spartans 21-7. Metro over Wesco as it stands right now. And um, as you can see on your bracket, these teams are playing to see who will play our second game. Ferndale versus Eastside Catholic in a battle of league champions. Ferndale retrospectively of the uh, Wesco Conference and Eastside Catholic of the Metro League uh, champion. That game goes kicks off here at Memorial Stadium at 4 p.m. And they will play the winner of this contest in the final four on November 26. On the other side of the brackets, in Yelm, the Kennewick Lions uh, have are now trailing the Yelm uh, Tornadoes 20 to 7. Yelm answering uh, Kennewick's first score to make it 20 to 7. And uh, Yelm has missed a couple of extra points. Otherwise, it would be 22 to 7. Um, but uh, one touchdown, uh, Kennewick was within, but now they are down two touchdowns, two scores. And they await the winner of the 2, 2 p.m. game between Bellevue and Lincoln, which kicks off in about one minute uh, from uh, Lincoln Stadium down there in Tacoma. Uh, we'll get you some uh, score updates from them. Uh, as that game begins to uh, develop, but yes, they will, they have, yep, they have now officially kicked off. It is now 2 p.m. So we'll get you some scores as those come in from that game as well. But down there in Yelm, they lead uh, the Kennewick Lions 20 to seven, um, and it says second quarter, but that is uh, now updated to they have reached the half. So that is the score at the half uh, with Yelm leading uh, Kennewick 20 to seven there. And uh, in this game right here, uh, you have uh, O'Day leading Stanwood. They await the winner of our second game, which kicks off at 4 p.m. right here on Rainer Avenue Radio between Eastside and Ferndale in a battle of league champions. They will meet on November 26th in the final four, as will the winners on the other side of the bracket. For now, though, we're going to... Uh, Pay a couple of bills and we'll be back on your community radio station, Rainier Avenue Radio. Rainier Avenue Radio dot world, your one stop shop for Seattle sports. We cover preps, we cover college, we cover pro, we cover it all. Huskies, Mariners, Seahawks, Garfield, South, Roosevelt, Metro, King County. This is where you want to listen to for all the sports that's happening in Seattle. Seattle Sports Weekly on Rainier Avenue Radio dot world. Dealing with COVID-19 is uncharted territory, and everyone has different challenges. People may feel anxious, down, or overwhelmed. For some, these feelings can lead to changes in sleep patterns, an increased use of alcohol or drugs, or withdrawing from the people around them. If you know someone who's having a hard time coping, you can help by reaching out to talk and listen. To learn more about how you can help someone in need, call the Suicide Prevention Lifeline at 800-273-TALK. Brought to you by the State of Washington. 
Hello, listener. What's important to you about what's going on in your community? Are you interested? Are you concerned? In any case, I invite you to tune into my show, Seattle Here and Now, on RainierAvenueRadio.org. Why? I will be covering a wide range of topics important to you and impacting the community. Each show will have a special guest or guests to share with you information on a variety of subjects that are happening here and now in Seattle. I promise I will work hard to make my show informative, interesting, and entertaining. Be sure to listen to Seattle Here and Now on RainierAvenueRadio.world. Your community radio station will provide you with more information. Rainier Avenue Radio. Your community radio station will provide you with more information. Rainier Avenue Radio. Women are not an homogenous group. We face discrimination differently depending on factors such as ethnicity, age, socioeconomic status, and more. Rainier Avenue Radio is proud to amplify women's voices. They are the experts of their own lives initiating conversations within their community about challenges they face, the solutions they're working on, and the opportunities they see. Please join us this Sunday from 2 to 5 for Women's Voices On Air. We know our challenges. We are the experts of our lives. We are master multitaskers, prioritizing our family, friends, and our faith above our own needs. Our needs and voices are too often overlooked. Please join us this Sunday from 2 to 5 p.m. for Women's Voices On Air. We tell our stories in our own way. I'm Paul Pearson, host of Star Time, and this is my real voice. Honest, you're hearing it on Rainier Avenue Radio. Dot world. Should have told her you were sorry. Welcome to the Fitness Corner. I'm your host, Mark Bryant, and you're going to get a whole total body workout on my show, starting off with a warm up, aerobics, strength training, cool down, and stretching every Friday from 11.30 to 12, right here on Rainier Avenue Radio. Would you like to see when your favorite Rainer Avenue radio show comes on? Check out our show schedule, updated weekly at RainerAvenueRadio.world. What's going on, world? It's your boy, OG Mambo. And your guy, D-Money. Join us along with Pint Size Patron and ID Yourself. Here on Fresh Juice at Rainier Avenue Radio. Every Wednesday hump day from 9 to 11 Pacific. Get exclusive interviews from your favorite artists, all the hottest music, and updates on what we got going on in the world. That's every Wednesday, 9 to 11 p.m. on Seattle's Rainier Avenue Radio. Tune in to Real Estate and Money every Tuesday afternoon from 2.30 to 3 here on RainierAvenueRadio.org. Join your hosts, Violetta Strash with John L. Scott Kent North and Tina Lombard with Guaranteed Rate Affinity. They'll help you navigate the waters of our volatile real estate market and offer you some guidance on how to make your hard-earned money work to make your dreams come true. Learn about current trends, get tips on financial matters, and have fun, interactive discussions about your home inside and out. That's real estate and money. You're listening to RainierAvenueRadio.world. Has your small business experienced property damage? Apply for the Storefront Repair Fund to receive a $2,000 grant to help cover storefront repair costs. The Seattle Office of Economic Development is investing nearly $2 million to help businesses recover from the economic impacts caused by damages to their storefronts. Grants will help cover costs such as broken windows, broken doors, broken locks, and etching on windows. Applications will remain open until all funding is awarded. Application assistance is available in multiple languages at 206-684-8090. For more information and to apply for the Storefront Repair Fund, go to seattle.gov slash economic development. Your community radio station will provide you with more information. Rainier Avenue Radio. Rainier Avenue Radio, your community radio station. This is Cindy Bray, the host of the Heartbeat Radio. Seattle, Raleigh, this is Paul Pearson, host of Star This is Paul Schneider today on the 73rd edition. Hey, of hey, y'all, welcome Star to Travel Guys. Rainier 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 your home for information about the impact of 
Your first hand accounts. We got the to test and I'm about to tell them that I work from a lot of people who know me. I'm still the first person they know. But it was almost like you were patient zero for South Seattle. Your stories of community coming together. I um, partner very heavily with Tacoma Urban League, who is doing some amazing, amazing work in response. We're doing things for small businesses. We're giving out uh, loans for small businesses. We're, we're... And so I think it's very important that we have leaders who feel the I mean, I, I cannot tell you we're calling 20, 30, 40 members. There's crisis in our community. We've been, we've been working to address it. Uh, Rainier Avenue Radio, broadcast 24 hours a day, Seven days a month. DJ Dirty John. That's not true. Z with Rainier Avenue Radio. Hey, this is Sergio Cool. Rainier Avenue Radio. World. World. Rainier Avenue Radio. World. We got you covered. Local impact. Global presence. We broadcast roughly through Rainier Avenue Radio. World and our weekly coverage of the impact on communities. Thank you for joining us again. You come in again. Now we are aware of the fact that we are and more focused. Rainier Avenue Radio World is your 24/7 digital media hub. Tune in at Rainier Avenue Radio World. Also find us on Facebook, Twitter, and TuneIn apps. This is Paul Pearson, host of Star Time, and when I'm not shouting "Badia" at city council meetings. I'm listening to Rainier Avenue Radio dot world. Hey, Buford, why are you kicking that old CD player? Because I can't hear the radio. Can't hear the radio? Let me help you. <laughs> hey, 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 you two, quit beating up that outdated audio equipment. You can't hear the radio on a CD player. You, you can. can. <laughs> no, you can't, you adorable simpletons. But you can hear some great radio on the Rainier Avenue radio app. It's brand new, it's free, and it's available for Android and iPhone. In fact, you can download the Rainier Avenue radio app right now from the Google Play Store or the iPhone app store. I'm going to go give me a smartphone right now. I'm just going to put a graduation cap on my rotary phone. <laughs> you two have very significant personal issues. Get the Rainier Avenue Radio dot world app today. This is Paul Pearson, host of Star Time. And when I'm not being reprimanded by traffic cops, I'm listening to Rainier Avenue Radio. World. You know you can't get enough of Rainier Avenue Radio. World. Hey, this is Paul Pearson. I've hosted the RNB show Star Time since the very beginning of Rainier Avenue Radio, and after years of featuring tracks from the 50s through the 80s, Star Time now plays R&B and hip hop from the 1990s as well. A whole half century of soul, funk, hip hop, and more on Star Time Wednesdays at 2 p.m. on Rainier Avenue Radio. I'm Paul Pearson, host of Star Time. And when I'm not rehearsing my annual address to shareholders, I'm listening to Rainier Avenue Radio. World. What's on your heart? Are you exhausted at the lack of progress for people of color in business, politics, and life? This is Cindy Bright, the host of Heartbeat Radio. Each week, we explore this heart condition of the country that is affecting you and me. We have real conversations about what's necessary for change. It's time to change this dialogue. Will you join this heartbeat weekly Wednesdays at 7 p.m. on Rainier Avenue Radio? We are live again back at a Rain Memorial Stadium, Rainer Avenue Radio, at the half O'Day leading Stanwood. A couple of minutes before we get back to action here uh, by a couple of touchdowns, as you can uh, see on your uh, brackets, uh, with uh, 
the winner uh, of this game awaiting uh, our following game, Eastside Catholic versus Ferndale, which kicks off at 4 p.m. here at Memorial Stadium. They will meet in the final four on November 26th. The uh, Bellevue-Lincoln game has begun, and Bellevue drawing first blood. The Wolverines going the first touchdown of the game, uh, seven to zero. Currently there in uh, Lincoln, in Tacoma, uh, with eight minutes left in the first quarter. Uh, Yelm and Kennewick currently sits at the half, with Yelm over uh, Kennewick currently twenty to seven uh, there at the half, and uh, we are uh, live, of course, on your community radio station. Um, and our following game will be a battle of league champions with the Metro League champion and undefeated Eastside Catholic Crusaders hosting a 10 and 0 record on the season, hosting the Ferndale Westco League champions at 9 and 2 on their record. And that kicking off at 4 p.m. right here at Memorial Stadium on Rainier Avenue Radio your community radio station. We'll get you more updates uh, from the Lincoln and uh, Bellevue game as it progresses. Same with the Yelm and Kennewick game as they are currently both in action. You can follow on the bottom uh, ticker on the bottom of your screen. It will be continue to be updated uh, as the scores continue to change. So feel free to follow that on the end as you uh, enjoy your game right here at Memorial Stadium. Uh, between O'Day and Stanwood with it 21-7 at the half. We are about one minute away from throwing it to our commentators, Tony B. and uh, John Yasutaki uh, for you there. Um, and uh, we'll hold it here for just a couple of minutes. As uh, we await uh, the start of the uh, second half for Kennewick and Yelm as well at that 20 to 7 uh, finish. But uh, we do have an update here for Bellevue and Lincoln, real quick. Uh, with six minutes left in the first quarter, it is uh, Bellevue up over Lincoln 7 0 there. Um, so we are, of course, on your community radio station, Rainier Avenue Radio. And um, here at the half at Memorial Stadium, with the glare of the sun directly um, in our faces, uh, we continue to try to, uh, you can see some of that there on your screen just a little bit um, with that sun. Uh, but that should dissipate actually in about an hour, maybe two. Uh, so when this, as the third quarter progresses, you're going to start seeing a lot more clearer of a screen. All right, so what we're going to go ahead and do is uh, throw it to our commentators right now. Tony B. on your play-by-play -play and John Yasutaki with your color commentary. Mm -hmm. Welcome back. Yes. We're about to start second half action here. 12 minutes on the clock. Yep. O'Day fighting Irish 21. Stanwood High School Spartans 7. O'Day will be receiving as we start. The second half, and uh, John, this first series, I'm sure you would agree, for Stanwood would be critical in that if they don't stop yep. O'Day from another long drive, they may have to change the way that they yeah. that, that they play. Because of the way they play, uh, they don't have a As whole lot of time. Up to the 15, up to the 20, up to the 25, up to the 30, up to the 35, to the 40, 45. Up to about the 48-yard line. It depends it where they mark the that forward not, progress. That's not the way to start. If you're playing for Stanwood, you just gave up a huge amount of field position. Again, remember, we always talk field position. Field position. Um, they could not afford to let O'Day start this far up the field. Uh, they are literally within striking distance anywhere on the field, but more so now because, uh, you know, the – Mr. Brown and company can move the ball. And Rasan Thomas on that return. Nice yeah. return for Rasan Thomas. Yeah, Again, shout out to Rasan. Yeah. up to the line and quickly first up down. the middle. And that's Beckett Swanson. Yep, first and, down. And, uh, John, you were going to say something about Rasan Thomas. Is Rasan that Thomas. Shout out, yeah, shout out to his uh, great uncle, James Burns, in Peru. So, Rasan, 
Rashawn Thomas, number five for O'Day. You know, big, shout big, out. Big return. And yeah, hopefully big James return. is down in Peru watching because, as you know, John, yeah. you can watch us all over the, the world. world. And James said that he's going to be watching over in Peru for his great nephew. So. And we're going to have a penalty, it looks got, like. Yeah, it's a, I think it's going to be a uh, yeah, five yard. And it's five yards, so that wipes out that nice first down run, run uh, for Beckett Swanson. And that will back the ball up another five yards and make it first and 15 yep. for the Fighting Irish from their own 42-yard line. Two wideouts, eye formation. And again, up the middle, Jason Brown. Jason Brown breaks through. Jason Brown still on his feet, right. makes up most of that yardage. You pick up a 13. That will yep. make it second and two now from second the two. Stanwood 45-yard line. Like I said, even if even if O'Day doesn't score and they kick the ball, they're going to put Stanwood so far in the hole. And, again, they are a running team, which means you eat up the clock, but it can work against you. If you have to score quickly, you can't uh, because that's not your style. So this is going to be interesting. If Second and two now yep. for O'Day from the 45-yard line of Stanwood. And – up the middle, handoff, and a pickup again, Man, John. He's, yeah, he's, I've, uh, I, I've, I've been waiting to use this all, both of these teams, three, four yards in a cloud of dust. Cloud of dust, yes. And they almost missed the handoff, but the guy, uh, he's so strong, he took two defenders with him past the line of scrimmage, and he got the first down. Good so, job as well by Deanna in getting that ball, too. Yeah, yeah, right. Just almost a miss miss on the mesh point. Swanson. Uh that's why you want a big stud fullback. <laughs> the I formation, two wideouts left. And again, this time the hole Brown, is huge. Brown with the hole breaks on the right side, splits two defenders. And Actually, that's tripped be a over his own. About it looked like he got yards. tripped over his own guy. I mean, he was wide open. He was making a cut up to the field, and uh, I think he stepped on his own guy, and tripped around him. Uh, Stanwood really didn't stop him on that run. So, first down. Well, Johnny was about to split defenders. Yes, exactly. And maybe the legs got tangled up. Is that like a split infinitive? <laughs> Anyways, but no, he, he they got entangled up, and uh, they, you know, he might still be running. So, first down now at the 25-yard line I for O'Day. Oh, Again, the handoff another, oh, inside. Oh. Another big hole for O'Day. Yeah, another it's... big bruising fullback yep. up the middle. For old day, I and formation. I think that was Carson Beck. Yep. I formation, straight handoff, right up the middle, a blast, a gut, whatever you want to call it, a dive, nothing fancy, just base football. Block man on man or zone block, it doesn't matter. They're moving the ball right up the gut. Uh, Stan, what you got to do something, you're going to have to uh, shore up that front. Uh, right now, it's not holding, it's well, leaking. John, when we saw when they uh, committed to stopping the run. Throw the pass. Got the pass thrown on them. They did. Deanna oh. dropped back and got a touchdown pass, actually. Now they jump. Flag here. Now it's half the distance, or five. No, it's five. I'm sorry. It'll be five yards towards the goal line. And I, I'm i not to downplay Stanwood, but if, if, if O'Day puts seven on the board now, it's going to be tough for Stanwood. Even though they'll have two quarters, uh, it, it's going to be tough for them to score enough points to get ahead. Uh, if they go down by, uh, you know, uh, 21 points, that's tough. Deanna under the center, split backfield. Deanna put the ball to Brown. Brown the over the there. left side. Brown is going to get into the end zone. Touchdown. Yep. Brown walks, walks into the end zone. Yeah. it's uh, Stanwood has no answer. If they start doubling up on the line of scrimmage and playing playing tough on the line of scrimmage, uh, O'Day's going to throw the ball on them. And uh, there really isn't a whole lot you can do now. That's uh, going to make it 27 to 7 now. Three scores. With 9.04 left in the third quarter. A lot of time, John, but as you said, Stanwood's style of play is not conducive to coming from behind. They don't like come this. from behind with the running attack that they have. They can put points on the board, they scored 60 plus points, but. It, it, you know, you don't have a lot of time. If There's you a run snap. The, ball. the hold is down. The kick is good. Is good. The refs will confirm that. Yep. Yes. And that will make it 28-7 to 7 O'Day on top now. Yep. 
And uh, uh, what, three minutes have gone off of this quarter. Yeah, there's nine minutes left in this quarter, so a third of this quarter is already gone. And again, Stanwood runs the ball. That is their style. That is their pattern. It's a lot to make up three scores in one quarter and a, and a third or two thirds. It is. That's a lot of points. Yeah, like a, a, O'Day scored in two minutes and 56. O'Day scored within three minutes of the start of the quarter. That's pretty fast. And again, John, that was that was all on the ground, and that yep. was pretty fast. That started with the kickoff by Rashawn Thomas. Rashawn Thomas. Great kickoff return. Good field position. You're listening to Rainier Avenue Radio dot world. It's me, Tony B, on your play by play. The coach, Jay Yeezy, on your commentary and analysis. Bounce kick at the 18 yard line, has a hole up the middle at the 40, breaks to the outside. He's at the 50, tries to cut back in, loses the ball on the ground. Yep. I think O'Day has, has it. Number 80, number eight, and number nine. Number nine. And that's Von Love with the recovery for O'Day. And they love him because. And so once again, John, Max Mayo with another big play. Yep. But does that's the second time this has happened, but doesn't hold on to the nope, ball. Nope. He, they stripped him of the ball as he's running up the field. Uh, he should have just gone out of bounds. But he tried to make more, tried to turn it upfield, and he got stripped of the ball. Mm. You know, things happen. Yeah, this is not this is not what Stanwood envisioned uh, uh, coming out of the West Coast that they did uh, with the kind of with, with the kind of performance they've had as well as in the playoffs. So it's we're gonna see what kind of metal they're made out of. You know, I like that term. What kind of metal is Stanwood made out of, ladies and gentlemen? We'll see. Ball on the 44-yard line now. Deanna back, looks to pass, goes for everything. It's co covered well. Makes a diving catch and a spectacular catch At the 20. by the old day player, Javaris Matthews. Wow. Yep. Laid out, caught the ball, retained possession, hit the ground, retained possession, and Deanna showing off the arm. Yeah. Old day comes <laughs> out. You expect him to take some time off to come back. With off Jason the, Brown. Off the ball. Right. <laughs> Off the clock, rather. Yeah. Again, here, here you go. You're giving away so much to stop the run. You just ate a 40-yard pass. And that was actually pretty well covered. That was just yep. give it up to Javaris Matthews. That was a spectacular catch. I formation. Again, ball handoff over the left side. Brown spins back. Still on his feet. Brown Man, manages he, to pick he, up a couple of yards where he should have been stopped rightfully oh, in the backfield. Yeah, you, you, got, you got to wrap that guy up. You cannot arm tackle him. Again, we, we said this all year. You know, these guys may not be super big, but they keep their feet moving. You go after a back that keeps his feet moving. It doesn't matter how big he is. He's got momentum. He is going to run you over if you don't wrap him up. Break down, break down, roll your hips, load it high, and wrap up. Again, Deanna under the center, eye formation. Handoff oh, inside, up the middle, yeah. and first Beckett down. Swanson picks up the first down right up the gut. Oh, that was smart. So you get a 15-yard unsportsmanlike penalty, number 52 for Stanwood, right in front of the referee. Pushes in with both hands after the play is dead. It's a dead ball foul. It'll be half the distance to the goal line, and uh, Odell will be at the five. Should be around the four or five yard line. It's a dead ball foul. Well, John, you mentioned, and we mentioned every game that Emotion. high school football is, is big time, but these are still young men, 15, 16, 17, yeah. 18 years yeah. old. Emotion. But you got to be able to control it. Look what happened last week when Rainer Beach's kid uh, got that unsportsmanlike, put them back 15 yards. That changed the game. 
That changed the game. Yeah, I knew it was going to be half the distance. So it's uh, first and goal at the five for uh, O'Day. Now, did I say it was going to be tough for Stanwood if O'Day scores? Well, they scored. Guess what? If they score again, it's going to be near impossible for Stanwood with the style of offense they have and the way they play. Uh, it, it, it's uh, it's all, it's almost going to be insurmountable. And again, John, turnovers. Yep. I formation First down double from wide. The five. Deanna pitch to Brown. Brown tries to cut it inside. Hesitates. Does get inside. Still on his He's feet. He's still on his feet. He's going to get to the one or two. And Brown, you know what, John, had the opportunity to try and take that wide. He may or may not have got the edge, and he just cut it up inside and said, let me get what I can get out of this. You want to hear my song? Your Mr. Song. Brown, you got the lovely football. Mr. Brown to the left, Mr. Brown to the right, Mr. Brown to the middle. <laughs> Something like that. You remember that song about Her Herman and the Hermits? Mr. Brown, Mrs. Brown, you've got a lovely daughter. Eight seconds on the yeah. field. Six seconds, five seconds. Oh, they lines up quickly. Again, touchdown. the ball to Brown. Touchdown. Jason Brown into the end zone. Yeah, uh, 34 to 7 with 613 left here to go in the third quarter. And O'Day puts it in the end zone for the second time here in the second half. Whoever predicted the outcome saying that. Stanwood had a 59% chance to win this game. I don't know if I would want to rely on their prognostication. And they only gave uh, O'Day a 41% chance to win. Mm, that's really interesting. Well, John, yeah. as that great orator Mike Tyson once said, yeah. everybody's got a plan. Until, Until they did. get punched in the face. Exactly. Or like, you know, Harry Truman and Dewey. Hey, I've got the presidency. Midnight. <laughs> Nine o'clock in the morning. Oh, Truman's the president. Here he is. Something like that. So with Bill six, Gaul, yeah. excuse me, the extra point is good. good to make it 35 to 7 now. Old yeah. day on top. 613, and if you're Coach Monty Kohler, he, 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 this is pretty much the script. Yeah. If you thought they ran the ball in the first half, you're going to see nothing but running the ball in the second half because it's going to eat up the clock. You only have 12-minute quarters in high school football here in the state of Washington, uh, national interscholastic uh, activities, uh, you know, 12-minute quarters. And so there's a quarter and a half left for Stanwood to score four touchdowns. This is a four score lead. That's tough. Got to hand it to these kids from Stanwood. They're not giving up. They're not giving up. Give them a lot of Well, respect. John, we were looking at this 14 to 7. Stanwood was moving the ball and Stanwood fumbled. O'Day got it back and put right. up 21 to 7 at halftime. But we always say could have been a different game except Yes. The problem is woulda, coulda, shoulda. Mm -hmm. uh, they don't count that in the final score. Yeah, and you know what the saying is? If bull bullfrogs had wings, they wouldn't bump their behind every time they jump. You know, something like that. So, yeah, it's it's going to be tough. They've got to change their game plan now. They're, if they didn't change it before, they're going to change it. They're going to have to throw the ball. You don't have enough time to run uh, like they want to. And uh, it looks like O'Day is going to crowd that line of scrimmage with five. They've gone to their five front. Yep. They're going to have five down linemen, four defensive uh, linebackers. You know, and so five, this four. time Custer lines up yep. in the, I'm still under the center with two backs in the backfield and ball up the middle. And John may yep. come out doing what, what they, they do. do. Yep. Hoping he breaks it. You got five down linemen. So, O'Day's oh, running a 5-4-2. And this time, quickly, Stanwood back to the line of scrimmage. 5-47, and the clock keeps moving. They're still in that offset tee. Custer drops back to pass, looks downfield, well covered, passes overthrown. Yeah. Not going to be any interference on that, that one. That was well defended. And that pass was uh, intended for Luke Brennan, 6-1 sophomore but overthrown 
That'll it make it a, is a, second down now. He's been taking hits, the quarterback. Uh, I don't know what kind of hit that if it was a late hit, good, you know, clean hit, whatever. We've got uh, a uh, Stanwood player. That's the quarterback, I down. believe. He's da been down before. And he's been he, and, and he's, he's always gotten up. But you well, know, John, I, I hate to I, mm -hmm. he's not moving, and I'm not gonna say too much because we don't want to alarm anyone. No, but he must have taken I didn't watch I'm sorry, I didn't see that play. I watched the uh pass upfield uh, on that out. Uh but uh he's been getting uh he's been getting uh hit, he's been getting rushed. I hope he's okay. Again, this is only a game, folks. Only a game. We don't want to see anybody get hurt. Oh, I watched a story about a young man that plays for Ohio State. He caught a touchdown pass the last game, and it just the, – the whole team went nuts. You know why? He had four separate AL, ACL uh, uh, injuries. Four. He is a fifth-year senior. He's only been able to play one season, and he had sustained ACL injuries for them. And he caught a touchdown pass, and they stopped the clock, and everyone just went wild. And you, you talk about determination. He said it's not about scoring a touchdown. It's about persevering and overcoming injuries. And so you, you, you don't want to see that happen, but, you know, the spirit, the indomitable spirit, uh, uh, of these young athletes, it, it, you know, it's something to be reckoned with, and that, and that's a real positive thing. But I'm hoping he's okay because he's been down a while. He's up. He looks a little wal. He looks a little woozy. Well, that, that's good to see. He is up, yeah. uh, walking gingerly, but again, uh, nothing apparently with the knees and the ankles, but does look. A little woozy, woozy. And I'm sure they'll put him yeah, in the concussion he, protocols. Yeah, he took a hit there, and um, that's what happens. I mean, you say quarterback, uh, uh, that's the Wyatt Custer, their 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 number one guy. So you know, it's, and John, I'm I'm happy that they they do this in protection of the yeah. football players, as you probably remember. There was a time when they would simply say, "Oh, you got your bell wrong." Yeah, I know. Uh, take two aspirin and uh, come back to practice tomorrow. Oh, you just got a little concussion. Well, what's a big concussion then? I see. I, it seems like I'm seeing stars and I'm hearing bells. <laughs> and so that'll be a penalty. 15 yards marked off. First down now. For Five, the, four, two, two um, high safety. Late hit. Yeah, Custer uh, again, this time in the shot. And actually not Custer. We'll have to find that. It's Bumgarner. Bumgarner. Bumgarner in the Wildcat. Bumgarner That's... up the middle. Picks up 12 yards. So. He's running back and a quarterback. That's uh, right. Yeah, Ryan. Ryder, Ryder, Bumgarner. Ryder Bumgarner. Ryder Bumgarner. And so you know, hey, they're competing. You got to hand it to them, Stanwood. You know, you lost your main guy, but you're gonna come back. You're gonna, you know, keep, keep, keep competing. Keep competing. And so Bumgarner will continue to line up at quarterback. Uh, he ran for 1,600 and Looks to pass. Yards. Again, takes off running. And a nice pickup there again of about seven mm -hmm. yards. Mm -hmm. And again, uh, he's the rider bomb gardener that, scored, uh, that gained 1,677 yards in this season. Those are numbers that, you know, 14, 12, 13 games seasons. Uh, he did it in nine. So Baum Baumgartner yeah. slightly rolled to the left and then said, no, I'm going to run this. I don't and know if it was ever a in. pass or not, yeah. but he ended up picking up six and a half yards, six yards maybe. Baumgartner tough run, again. Tough runner. The man in motion. Uh, yeah, that motion. And we got a flag. Uh, the slot back, uh, the wing back uh, moved too soon. They, I, it's hard for me to call their formation because it's almost like a wing T. But it isn't a wing tee in its full scope. It's almost like a offset tee where you got a, a, a back that's like a flanker, but he's near the line of scrimmage more, again, like an offset tee, uh, where you got two backs in the backfield, and they'll cant themselves left or right. In other words, they'll be favoring left or favoring right. They run one split receiver, usually left, uh, and the, sometimes they'll bring him right, but sometimes they run a tight line. 
So Baumgartner, excuse, yeah, the rider Baumgartner again shotgun. in the shotgun. And we'll have another flag on the field, this time from the defensive backfield. The flag is thrown. And they'll they ran mark out off of time. Another five as the clock hits zero. Delay a game. So that'll make it second now. It's about 14, 15. And about 14. Is, yeah, yeah. This is not the direction you want to go if you're a Spartans fan. Mm -hmm. Again, with your quarterback out of action, Bumgarner again keeps the ball, and this mm -hmm. time O'Day is ready for him, and he's not going to get back to the line of scrimmage. No, he's going to lose about four, three or four. Well, John, as the sun sets uh, so, so, do the, so, do, so do the hopes of the <laughs> Stanwood Spartans. As the sun sets, so goes the hopes of the Stanwood Spartans. It's already three minutes you left. Took in the this words yeah. right out of my mouth. Well, I'm sorry I did that, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> those, those of you who are dedicated uh, Spartan fans and family members, hey, you know they they're putting up a good fight, but it's it's going to be tough. And uh, an old day player tries to run off the field. Old day calls timeout. Yeah. To as the, uh, yeah. the Spartans were trying to hurry up and snap that ball yep, uh, so that they could pick up an additional five yards here with third and 15 to go, but O'Day calls a timeout. So with 3.03 left here to go in the third quarter, O'Day comfortably ahead, 35. The O'Day fighting hours to Stanwood, Spartans, seven. Yep, and as I've said before, based on what was presented, this is an upset. Again, Stanwood was picked. Stanwood was picked to win this game. Sixty percent chance to O'Day's forty percent chance. So that's pretty significant. When you talk about the level of competition at this stage of the season, that's pretty significant. One team having a twenty plus points or twenty point advantage in terms of chance to win. That's pretty significant, Tony. Because these teams tend to get over, you know, match fairly evenly, but uh, they gave the nod to Stanwood and look at the score. O'Day 35, Stanwood 7. I don't know. They, you know, like I said, I well, would hate John, to... we are yeah. we are listening to you, but I think the problem that Mr. Bellis and I have is who is the they that the, came up? Whatever came off and of I, the, I, the I know sports you said report. It's yeah. prep, but... yeah. Well, that's who I saw it from, but then it could, I don't know the source. And uh, run around the left side, it, and they stopped. And it. that'll be a pickup of about five, still Stop on his line of scrimmage. And that'll be back to the original, yeah, original line, of line, of line of scrimmage. That will bring up fourth down and about ten, maybe eleven. Yeah. To uh, go yeah, for a first down. More like eleven, uh, Tony. But yeah, the they and I'm not trying to play cutesy with it. These are this is the reporting uh, system, you know, reporting wire. Uh, they gave John. Us, yeah. John, as someone who utilizes Max Preps a lot, they give the opportunity as fans to vote. To vote who would right. you like to win? And so that was a fan vote. That may be a fan vote. I don't know. It just said uh, they predicted. Handoff inside. Uh, oh. Actually a delayed draw. And Luke Brennan in at quarterback now for Stanwood. They lost about six yards on that. A it's loss on that Change play. of possession. O'Day's ball. So O'Day will take over now uh, with 2.15 here to go. Still in the third quarter on their 47-yard line. It, Stanwood has lost quarterback Canyon Bumgarner. Um, into the game is Luke Brennan. Ryder hey, Mike. Bumgarner. Mike, too, too early to call? Excuse I think me, Wyatt over. Custer. I said, what? Wyatt Custer uh, went out with I an got, injury. I got to be unbiased. <laughs> oh, interesting. They were favored to win. First yeah. down here for O'Day now. I formation. Split receiver. And oh. the pitch to Brown. Brown goes off the tackle. Oh, cuts it inside. Yeah. Actually, that wasn't Brown. That no, was no. a. Number 41. Adam Baxter. Yeah. yeah. Well, it was number 41, 41 listed here. Is that correct? That doesn't well, they're in plus, plus side of the 50, uh, Tony. So, again, if they eat up a couple more minutes, uh, that will be the end of the third quarter. Yeah, I don't think I had the right information there. You go, I formation. 
Yeah, new running backs, uh, Tony. Yeah, whole new set. More information still. Dana in the game, but looks like the ball came out. Oh well. Yeah, yeah. Doggone it. You you would think something would bounce uh that ball would bounce Stanwood's way, but bounce back into the uh O'Day player, O'Day player's hands. That was just a straight dive on a give up the middle. Well, John, I, I can't find any other mission here, but it says that number 41, 63205, Adam Baxter, defensive end, tackle, and guard. And but he was lining up in the backfield. backfield if right. that is indeed. Adam Baxter, two yeah. backs in the backfield. Deanna throws the pass, uh, and that one is uh, a, little a little too, too far, far up. in yeah. front of the player intended. He was open. He uh, was open. Yeah. Again, they were. They were. You know. Again, the countenance is this: we got to stop the run, no matter how hard it's going to be, because they are beating us, beating us down with a run, and we've got to do something. Uh, you know, pride, all of that. Uh, you you want to stop that other team. Uh, it's just human nature. It's just natural. O'Day is punt very rare. <laughs> They're punting, ladies and gentlemen. And snap hits the turf. Does yeah. get the punt off. No, and he, we've got he, a flag. Well, first of all, the punter kneeled He's down. Kneeled down, John, and they're going to call him down. That, that's down. So he the, the snap. Was low. Hit the, hit the turf. How the many? The punter kneeled down to grab the punt as it bounced, huh. and they're going to call him down, down. at the spot that he yep. kneeled, kneeled down, down in at the 35-yard line of O'Day. All right. The Spartans will have an opportunity with 44 seconds here to go in the third quarter. And make, do something with this. But, uh, you know, what have we said all year, Tony? The snap, the center snap, whether it's a – Whatever, shotgun, short, short punt, uh, T for T whatever the snap on punts, etc. It just you know, it just uh, wears you out. Okay, John, I've got correct information. Sir Keenan Hart, oh, number okay. forty-one. That's that that makes sense. Nice mm -hmm. run for O'Day, but I'll get back to the game that we are now. First down. That's a 10 yard run for Stanwood. Split and back. Stanwood again with the handoff hand inside. Oh. And again, a nice pickup, John, there. Yep. They're, they're not doing it in big chunks, but they are getting positive yards. And a pickup of uh, six yards is not too shabby, but they're down 35 to 7. See if they get this snap off. They do. Again, a handoff inside. Bumgarner looking to the end zone. And Ryder Bumgarner. Touchdown. Into Stanwood, the right. end zone. Touchdown, Stanwood. Now, but as they say, I fear a little too late. A little too late. We are in the fourth quarter now. Well, John, that is a trivia question. Uh, too little, too late. Too little, Who too late. Who is mm -hmm. the singer that sang that song with Denise Williams? I have not a clue. Are you kidding? Nope. Too little, too mm -hmm. late. Uh, Marvin Gaye. No. Uh, Jerry, Johnny, Johnny Jerry Mathis. Butler. Oh, Johnny Mathis. Johnny oh, Mathis. that's right. Johnny Mathis. And yeah, and he's up. in town. Johnny oh, Mathis God. is going to be where? At the... Uh, Muckle Shoot Casino? Emerald Queen, I Or believe. Emerald Queen? One of the two. The kick is up. The kick is good. Stanwood, 14 now. Very good. They didn't give up. Got to give them a hand. They did not give up. That, that's very good. And so one more quarter of football. It's not impossible. Down three scores. Well. Stanwood. Well, it's not impossible, John. No, There's a whole quarter I know. of football left. It's not impossible, but they have to stop. <laughs> O'Day. O'Day is ostensibly well, whenever they got stopped, they stopped that themselves. Is probably the bigger problem. However, the last time O'Day did punt, but then again, we they were substituting pretty liberally at that point as well. Yeah, they had different players and I saw Mr. Thomas and Rasant uh Thomason number five. But I mean you know, Monty 
is, is getting some playing time for his players because you need them. Uh, if you're going to also build for next year, uh, this year, uh, they're striving to get into the, uh, well, the championship round, and they are one step away. But, again, um, the way it goes for Stanwood, it's, it's going to be a little tough. John, as I was walking through the crowd at halftime, everyone saw my colors and assumed that I was representing O'Day, and this is actually USC. An onside kick, potential to have it. Looks like they're fighting over the football. I think the O'Day player had initial possession. Maybe Stanwood got it. If they did, he took it away. Yeah, it looks like he got it. And he did. The O'Day player had the ball. The Stanwood player grabbed for it and apparently took it away. And they're going to give that to Stanwood, John. I, anything's possible. Anything's possible. First and 10 at the 49 of O'Day. So Stanwood again with the ball. Luke Brennan at quarterback looks to pass. Fires a short pass complete for a first down. Yep. At the 40, 39. And that's Bumgarner on the receiving end, and Bumgarner has pretty much been the entire offense yep. for Stanwood. 39. Let me see if he got a first down out of this. It's Are they going to call it a little short? I thought he had it, but it's, it, it's very close. close. Very close. It looks like it may be a little short. Coach was saying something for Stanwood. We don't know what, but he was complaining or saying something to the official. But and the officials are, are huddling. The the official that has the spot has, has it about six to eight inches short. Yeah, 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 yeah. So. And the four officials are gathering to discuss what's going to happen here. And sportsmanlike conduct. And so that's what they were debating there. Yeah. So it doesn't, the six inches no longer matter. No, it's going to be unsportsmanlike conduct against O'Day. And John, that is the big ticket. Yeah, 15 yard penalty. So they're going to mark off 15. And whenever they do this, John, it seems like the ref just goes forever yeah. when they mark off the big ticket. Oh, yeah. That'll take the ball all the way down to the 24 yard line now. First and 10. And only 11 seconds off this clock in the fourth quarter. Stanwood has ended up with the ball and great position. And again, they hustle to the line. John, you said they're not quitting. No, they're not. Luke Brennan in at quarterback, drops down the pass, looks over the middle, drops the ball. The ball is loose. It looks like an old day player has it. Stanwood might have gotten it back. And there's another flag on the field. Stanwood retains possession. Nathan Guerra recovered the ball, and we're going to have a penalty. And you can hear face mask. The fans. Uh, we are on the O'Day side of the field, and they are none too pleased. Uh, it was a face mask penalty. And so once again, the O'Day Fighting Irish will be penalized. Right. And what would have been a huge loss ends up being a 15-yard penalty for face mask. So after a pretty clean game, John, right now, um, O'Day finds themselves getting penalized. Uh, and that does a couple things, John. As we know, it stops the clock. Yeah. And it also improves the field position of Stanwood. Well, you, you, you know, the point is, you know, you, 
I coached, and uh, coaches will tell you, penalties for unsportsmanlike conduct, you know, things like that, uh, they're uncalled for. Uh, you know, those can be stopped. Jumping offside, uh, you know, that kind of thing, th those, that's part of the game, you know, the mechanics of the game. Kids get excited, etc. But when you have an unsportsmanlike conduct, 15 yeah. 15 more yards. Yeah. That's going to make it second, and it looks like about two, two, two and a half. Uh, instead of the uh, uh, again, yeah. uh, a, a, a big loss on the play, yeah. it'll be a pickup, the penalty, first down, and about three, and about seventeen to go yeah. for another seven points on the board yeah. for Stanwood. Running that same formation, Brennan Keep under formation. the center. Yeah, it's time. Brennan hands the ball off inside and nothing doing inside. Might have got the a yard. Yep. Depends on where they mark the forward progress. Yep, they're going to give him two. So that nagging half yard still to go for a first down. Yep. That will make it second in about a half yard. Yep. So again, they Brennan under the formation. center probably look for Bumgarner to get the ball. He does. Bumgarner hit but stays on his feet. Bumgarner all the way down to the five-yard line. Yep. And, and John O'Day had a chance to get him in the backfield. And they missed him. Yep, missed him. Ryder Bumgarner stayed on his feet. How many yards did you say he had this year, John? 1,677. 1,677 yards yep. for Ryder Bumgarner. That's Showing a, us in this game against a pretty solid defensive team for O'Day that he earned them. Yep. He's That'll a make tough it runner. first and goal now yep. from the six-yard line. Stanwood on the move. Again, the ball to Bumgarner. Bumgarner into the end zone. Touchdown. Stanwood and John. Yep. That's going to make it 35-20. to 20. We were in a four-score game. Right. So now it's a two-score game with 10 minutes left. All right, 10-18 here to go as they line up for the extra point kick. Down, kicks up. And it's good. And it's good. Mm -hmm. 35 to 21. Don't go anywhere. Yep. We have got a football game here yep. at Leon H. Brigham Field. O'Day was up 35 to 7. Looked like they were yep. going to run away with it. Well, you know, Al's going to be talking to his team and saying, look, special teams, keep your head on a swivel, pay attention. You know, uh, what else can you say? I mean, they let that ball get away from them on that onside kick. And, you know, if it worked once for Stanwood, they're going to work it again because the short clock is on, not in their favor. And they've got to score fast. And, uh, you know, there's 10 minutes left. Uh, if O'Day gets the ball and they run four to five minutes off, it's going to be tough. Well, John, uh, if you give O'Day the ball on the onside kick at about the 45 yard they, line, they go for the short field. Oh, yeah, they're they're prime. They're they in kick prime. It all the yeah. way down. Right. Hope that you can stop them, which you really haven't done yet. Nope, they haven't. I guess I'm um, I'm guessing we'll probably see the starters back in the game for O'Day. Oh, for sure. And uh, if they do an onside kick and they don't get the ball, like you said, O'Day is going to have maximum field position. Uh, and we always talk about field position, you know. And, There's a uh, lot of green, John, between I know. the O'Day receiver at the 12 and um, the other 10 players between the 45 and the 50 for right. the onside kick. So if they can put this down there at about the 30-yard line, and again, it's a squib onside, or it bounces up. Out of bounds. And the ball goes out of bounds. So that is... First down, O'Day at the 48-yard line. They're about, on about 48. the 48-yard line. They're 48, right. We'll see if uh, – we'll see who comes out offensively. Well, Monty's saying ball control. Let's just control the rest of the game with the run. That's how you do it. 
you cannot control the time on the clock through a pass. You got to do it with the run. Keep the clock running. Let them use their timeouts, etc. Blah, blah, blah. And it becomes a ro- broken record. I formation. They've Deanna had some success. under the center. Deanna hands the ball off to Brown. Brown over the right side. Brown still on his feet and a pickup of about five. five. Yep. It's exactly what you want. Exactly what you want. Positive yardage. And look what's happening. The clock. We're under 10 minutes now. And old day. And, ba- yeah, and based on what I've seen, if O'Day, they run anywhere from four to seven minutes off the clock. O'Day is taking their sweet time. Again, the ball handed off in the backfield to number eight. Breaks upfield, picks up the first down, still on his feet. And 9.30 on the clock, John. Yep. Well, timeout, uh, ODA player is injured. But, uh, again, you're running the clock, running the ball, running the clock, uh, you know. Even if O'Day doesn't score, they're going to eat up so much time. They're going to eat up so much time that there's very little, very little uh, opportunity for uh, uh, Stanwood. And they're playing. They're playing tough. Got got to hand it. They were, now that I look at it, they've been pretty, they were pretty much overmatched. And I, I think what we have here, John, again, I don't like to guess, but it looks like a cramp. Cramp, yep. Hey, cramp. Looks like it. They're working on the uh, either the ham, probably the ham or the quad. It's cramp. See, you know, you know, during hot weather, you drink a lot of, you know, a lot of fluids, electrolytes, etc. But when it gets cold like this, Tony, you probably don't drink as much when you should be, because you're burning it up, and you can get, you know, cramping as a result. Electrolytes. And we've all had those kind of cramps where you just got to hold your breath and hope it goes away because it ain't going away easy. And as what you know, talking, John, about uh, old day running the ball, you got to give it up to Monty. A couple of big pass play pass plays. Mm-hmm. One was for the touchdown, and then the other, the long pass that was a phenomenal catch by Javaris. Yeah. Again, around to the right side. There's the run, the 40, still in bounds, and runs out of bounds and, and stopped the clock. And that looks like that's Joseph Fulvai. So. Uh, Jason Brown Jr. apparently is done for the rest of the afternoon, and probably Monty feels pretty comfortable about his offense. Stay in bounds. I mean, yeah, you should have stayed in you're, bounds. Your running back, running back coach is saying, "Stay in bounds. Hold on to the ball and stay in bounds because you want that clock to run. Force them to take the timeouts." Joseph Fulvai is saying, "I don't get to play much, man. I'm trying to get every yard." Yeah, right I know. I'm not going out. I'm not going out of bounds. Yeah. I'm looking for somebody to hit. Yeah, they <laughs> Stan was got their starting crew in there. There. Dana. Yeah. Again, the full vie. This time cuts to the right side again. This time cuts back inside to stay in bounds. And he's uh, first down. Picks up the first down. It was Jason Brown. That was Jason Brown. All right. Holding. And the holding penalty will negate that pick yep. up by Jason Brown and back O'Day up. They'll make it second, John, and about 13 to go. Do yep. you think O'Day will pass? Yep. 
Yes. Well, did you uh, say yes? No, no. What I'm saying, <laughs> yes, is second and thirteen. But no, I don't. Th- I think they're still going to run. The power eye, and again, yeah. the ball to number eleven, or is that forty-one? Either way, the but he does his best. Forty-one to try to stay in bounds, but he moved the ball. Look where he is. Yep, that's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Probably pretty close to ten yards on that run. Sir Keenan Hart. Right. That's a good run. To put on time. 5'9 Junior. And uh, he might be 5'9 both ways. He seems kind of thick, John. He is, but he <laughs> did a good job. Got that, turned that ball upfield. Yeah, they put 11 more seconds or something like that on. Nine more seconds on. They put more time on. Um, again. O'Day is controlling the tempo of the game. Uh, they've got the ball. and Third down now. Dana lines up again, fakes the pitch, goes downfield, has the player wide open. No, they called the play off, though. And they're going to call that off. But again, uh, John had his man over the middle wide open. And the O'Day fans, pretty boisterous. I don't that, – that doesn't make any sense. The play should have ran and the clock should be running, but it was an incomplete pass, so no time came off the clock. So, you know, you, you got to wonder what happened there. Uh, that was an interesting play, Tony. Uh, and there's the pitch. And, again, Sir Kanan picks up the first down. Oh, yes. Yeah, it's they're just they're just running the clock out. <laughs> Here comes Jason Brown Jr. Yep, yep. See now, ostensibly about twenty seconds should have been off that clock. We should be under seven minutes. And the clock is moving again. First down for O'Day. Deanna, power eye formation, and now the clock will stop. And encroachment on Stanwood will give up another five yards to O'Day. And that'll make it first and five from the 22-yard line of Stanwood. And... John O'Day did what you mentioned, did what everybody probably thought was going to happen. They've methodically marched the ball downfield, mm-hmm. taking time off the clock. Yep, and they shocked everybody when they threw that pass over the middle, which and should have been a touchdown. What? It should have been a touchdown. He was yeah, wide, wide open. open. I know, but that's what's happening. They play pass, and uh, Stanwood gets frozen trying to stop the run. And guess what? They've given up so much yardage downfield on pass plays. So, you know, it's a big hole. And again, up the middle, I believe that's Jason Brown Jr. Man, there was a hole. And uh, works his way down to potentially another first down. It's another first down. See, now this is the, 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 the dilemma. Do you use your timeouts to stop O'Day to stop the clock? Because they're potentially going to probably score. The last thing you want them to do is eat up the clock and score at the same time. So you got to do something. But if you can't stop their run, it, this is, as they say, a fait d'accompli. I like to say that. And it's that. a pitch it's to the gone. right side. He's, Jason Brown Jr., he's going to get stopped in the backfield and taken out of bounds unless they call that in play. No, it's running. Clock is running. So, yeah, they're going to say his forward progress was stopped before he was out of bounds. 6.33, 6.32. The clock continues to run. I mean, you, O'Day you got, continues to run the football. You got three downs. You got three downs right here, O'Day. You know, Stanwood, you've got to shut them down. 
you, you can't let them get more yardage. You got to stop the score if you have any chance. Deanna under the center gets the snap, and again up the gut with Jason Brown Jr. It's close. He's got. Gonna be a little bit shy of the first down. First down it's gonna make but, it sec third yeah. and about two or three. Yep, third and about two. It looks like uh, Tony. And the field clock continues to run at 26 seconds. The game clock at 5:47. Yeah. And Stanwood, a valiant effort, John. They never oh, quit. Yeah. They never quit. They never quit. A lot of character in those kids. Again, power eye formation. Dana to the second back through. I believe that's Jason Brown around the corner. Touchdown. And touchdown for O'Day. So you see, you see what I said, the dilemma, stop the clock or stop the score. <laughs> what are you going to do? Hey, you couldn't stop the score. So now the clock becomes irrelevant. Forty-one twenty-one now, O'Day on top. So that's a three-score differential with five minutes to play. So apparently there's been another fan vote, John, and the O'Day side uh, has broke out in the I believe that we will win chant. Oh, yeah. I, mean, I think so. Over. And the kick is good. 42 to 21. It ain't over till it's over. Yes, it is, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> it is over. There is no way Stanwood, as much as valiant as they are, the Spartans, valiant, there's no way they're going to overcome a, a three-score deficit with five minutes left with the way they, they play football, which is hard-nosed, run the ball. Uh, you got, a, like I said, a young man, 1,677 yards running or, or yardage. He's responsible for that many yards so it's uh it's gonna be it's gonna be tough uh gotta give them credit coming out of that tough west coast league uh you know you gotta give them credit uh come down here hostile territory uh put on a good show scored first seven nothing uh, i forgot you know hey recent history uh stanwood scored first and it was seven nothing So let's hope we all close. Let's hope both teams close. Both teams close out the game in a clean fashion. No penalties. No unsportsmanlike. Oh, day with the kick. Bounces on the ground. Mishandled. Oh, he mishandled it. Back to the nine. Up to the fifteen. A little running up to the twenty, and then taken out of bounds at about the twenty-four yard line. So. Made, made, made a little something out yes, of that. Yes, he did. Yes, he did. Well, like I said, he didn't give up on it. He he was doing what he had to do. It's like, yep, flag on the play. Offside. Or illegal block. We've got a little bit of a stoppage of play here. Unsportsmanlike conduct. Unsportsmanlike conduct against O'Day. That's got to drive Monty and Al and all those guys crazy. Because, again, those are the kind of penalties that you just don't want your players to do. You cannot. I mean, it just it's ridiculous. That can be controlled. And if I'm not mistaken, I think that's going to be taken up as an issue with that young man or man, that player. The Stanwood Center, every single play, John, comes out like he means business. Yes, he does. Runs up to that football. Second man. That's still on his feet. And he's Pick running. Pick up of he's about running. nine. He's playing hard. And yeah. then we've got something on the sidelines there between yeah. an O'Day player 
And, and the Stanwood player. They, he threw him to the ground out of bounds. So that's unsports, unnecessary roughness, unsportsmanlike conduct, one of the two. Well, John, it was at the point of the game. O'Day oh, oh, oh obviously ahead, and what you hope for, like you said, at the end of the game is is, is just play, play clean. Play clean. Play clean. On, on both on, sides both of the ball. Sides. Don't, both, don't let yeah. this deteriorate yeah, it's just, a, into something yeah, that uh, uh, doesn't have to happen. Again, that's uncalled for. You don't – yeah. Yeah, see, that – that's unnecessary. And you can get hurt. People can get hurt. A late block, a clip, you know, it, it just is not necessary. Again, it's only a game. All right, second down now and about 17 to go. And we've got another Number whistle. Playing. Oh, man. They're going, yeah, they're going backwards. So now it'll be 20, 20 plus yards. Stan would go in the wrong direction. Yep. That same set again under the center handoff again to the first player through and that'll be a pickup of about a couple yards This is make a breakdown. They've got to make it third on this. and about six. Well, yeah, 21. Back to pass. Finally, just throws the ball. I don't know if there was a receiver there or not. Uh, Luke Brennan was under all kind of pressure. And I, they may call him down in the grass, John. Well. <laughs> Whatever happened, it didn't look like it was going to evolve into anything. And they are going to say that he was uh, in the grass. In the grass? Yeah, it looked like it because uh, he wasn't going anywhere. Fourth down, 26 yards to go. The hopes of Stanwood probably rely on a miracle at this point. John? Well, it's fourth down. The snap is high. Throws the ball downfield, intercepted by the O'Day player, and um, O'Day will take over, and well, he got somebody smacked. will get to say that they got a football interception well, he and the quarterback he, on the other he, side. He got smacked horizontal hit. by that O'Day player, and that's why the ball came up short and floated up there. Man, he took a hit. Uh, it was, you know, you know, Katie barred the door, uh, you know, uh, like they say, uh, no, hey, no conditional surrender here. You take the hit. Uh, unfortunately, I hope he's okay. Uh, but uh, you know, it's you're trying to win the game. Uh, you're way behind. There's no such thing as a 28 point scoring play. You know, it ain't gonna happen. It ain't gonna be a 14 point scoring play. It ain't. There's no such thing. Got to give him a hand. He's a competitor. Uh, he knew he knew he was going to get smacked, uh, and yet he still stayed in there and tried to get the ball up. Yeah. Again, another so. Stanwood QB exits the game yeah. a little woozy. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, here we go. Uh, injury to insult. Got and an interception. Got knocked to the ground. Knocked out of the game, and uh, you know, ball got intercepted. So. Uh, insult to injury or injury to insult. Back into the game now. It's Jason Brown Jr. 
42 to 21, 323 left here to go in the game. And they run into each other. The ball hits the ground. By they, I mean Jason Brown Jr. and quarterback for old day, Dana. That's the best play Stanwood. That's the best play Stanwood made all game long. And it was a mix up in the backfield. The mesh point, the quarterback ran into the back, or the back ran into the quarterback. Either way, they lost four or five yards on that play. And, and Jason Brown Jr. is going to come out of yeah, the game. Yeah, this is this is it. With two minutes, uh, less than three minutes left in the game, uh, you know, let's pull the starters out. We got another game coming up. So I formation, double double wideouts. And this time the snap goes to the second back. And again, that's Sir Keenan, and Sir Keenan picks up about eight yards. Eight, eight or, yeah, because of that loss and those yards, it's all. All positive. So there's two and a half minutes left, Tony. And no, we John, don't even, some, yeah, something yeah. tells me yeah. Stan Wood may not see this ball again. No, uh, I don't think so. And there's no such thing as a miracle here. Uh, we're not on 34th Street. <laughs> yeah. But it is the season, John. How do you feel about that? The holiday season is upon us. Bah humbug. <laughs> Bah humbug. Beckett Swanson with the carry. I, I, like I said, bah humbug. Hey, did you get to watch my daughter in Spirited last night on I, Apple I TV? I did not, John. Well, thanks a lot, Tony. <laughs> bah not. humbug to you. Happy, good <laughs> So afternoon. tell us, for those who are uh, mm -hmm. unfamiliar with what this conversation is about, John, what you are sharing. My us. daughter is one of the primary dancers in... The movie Spirited with Ryan Reynolds and Will Ferrell on Apple and Octavia Spencer on Apple TV Plus. Congratulations. Spirited. To your daughter. Looks like we have a neutral zone infraction, but they're going to let this one go. Sir Keenan Hart around the left side finally dragged First down. down. I don't see a flag on the field, so no, uh, maybe there was encroach. an infraction. Uh, Stanwood did encroach, but hey, let's let's let him play. Oh, they, oh there is a flag. They it there anyway. is a flag. Yeah. Well, that would wouldn't be fair, John. Not to oh, call. Oh, they called it holding. They call holding. Yeah. Oh. Well, it, it looked like there was encroachment by Stanwood, but they let it go, and so now they're calling holding, holding. on all day. Yeah, all day. But you know. Well, John, I, I may have been wrong. Yeah, I, as far as O'Day holding on to this possession with 113 left to go in the game, um, and fourth, fourth down and 12. and 12 yards to go. Yeah, Stanwood will get the ball back. Presumably, Let, let's take a fan vote and see what the fans think. <laughs> I'm heckling you, John. I know you are. <laughs> and you know what? It does not matter. It, it does not matter. I, I, I rise above it. You know? You're listening to Rainier Avenue Radio dot world. Our exclusive coverage. Exclusive meaning that if you're watching us, this is the best place to be. Yeah. It's me, Tony B, on your play by play, and the coach, Jay Yeezy, John Yasutaki. Thank you. Yasutaki, the elder. No, Yasutaki, the greater. Let's go medieval. John Yasutaki, the greater, and Michael Yasutaki, the lesser. Thank you. He'll be doing play-by-play -play on the next game coming up, which is Ferndale versus Eastside Catholic, number one. The Eastside Catholic. Eastside Catholic, number one in the, you know, number one in the division, but number two in the state, I believe, because Yelm is number one. We're going to get an update from our illustrious statistician technician uh everything everything under the sun uh uh that can be done is dan and he's going to give us our stuff daniel bellis will give us the updates and the sun is out john still barely peeking over uh, the blind? trees uh, yeah. above a uh, climate pledge arena and yeah. the lights are on as yeah, well yeah. here at leon h brigham field yeah. memorial stadium and o'day will punt the ball this is i think what is the second punt Received that about the nine-yard line. Gets happy feet. Bumgarner trapped up and wrapped up 
at about the 13-yard line, and so actually made it out to the 15, mm -hmm. 16. Was that the second punt of the game? I think for so. O'Day? About as many punts as passes. Maybe one more pass. That's second punt of the game. Or third. No, got to be second. I, I don't think I remember. I think that was the second punt. Yeah, my short-term memory is not good, but man, what the heck, you know. So next week we will not be broadcasting. Is that correct, Tony? Right. No. Oh, I wouldn't say I wouldn't go that far. Oh, okay, cool. I um, wouldn't go that far. I'm with you. I'm with you. Um and that's the semifinal, which means it won't be a memorial, correct? It'll be out at the uh Well, it it depends who wins. Oh, okay. Okay. Well, that means hold on, hold on. If uh Eastside Catholic wins. And O'Day looks like they're going to win. You got two well, Seattle there's, teams. Is, they're still Yelm, ranked number one. Yeah, Yelm is ranked number one. I think they're beating Kennewick. I, at least I feel it. I have a sense. I have a sense about these things, Tony. I have a sense about these things that I could have swore you owed me a hamburger, but you, you clarified that I owe you one. Okay. So right now, mm -hmm. Kennewick is losing to Yelm 36 to 21. Mm in the fourth quarter. Mm. Mm. So who knows, John, maybe we will make the trip down to Yelm. Yeah, but you know what, Yelm, I mean, Kennewick can score some points, you know that? And breaks over to the right side. Bumgarner still on his feet. Bumgarner gets the hold first him. down. Got an illegal block or a hold down there. And you got to give it up. Yeah, for Stan for Gum, Bumgarner. And Bumgarner, he's, he's trying. He's a competitor. Good kid. But like Ryder I said, Bumgarner. I think he's number one in the state, rushing 1677. I believe he is number one 3A. I don't think there's anyone uh, in that realm. Number one in the state, uh, rushing. So we got 49 seconds left. John? Yep. 49. 49. <laughs> we are here at Leon H. Brigham Field, also known as Seattle High School Memorial Stadium, dedicated to the memory of the Seattle High School students who gave their lives, sacrificed their lives during World War II. And this has been a really interesting game. A, a team that was favorite is being beaten by a team that was not favorite to win. John, I, I, I you keep saying that. Because I, based on what I got on the data, when I do the research, and you know I do research, research. It's a fan vote. Well, how do how do you know that? Did you research that? I uh, use Mr. Max Preps a lot, oh, okay, John. Okay, okay, so. I'll shut up. Okay, fine. I'll leave, I'll leave it at that. Hey, I John, got this from the at, New York at, Times. At this point, what? you are you are spreading misinformation. Okay, fine. Disinformation? <laughs> Who are you trying to call me? Donald Trump? Oh, oh no. no. Here we go. We're oh, watching football. Oh, yeah. Uh -oh. Pass lobbed up in the air. Caught by number 21. Races down the sideline at the 50. Down to the 46, 44-yard line. Stays in bounds. And he just... Threw that thing up in the air. It fluttered, wibbled, wobbled, yeah, came down. Number 21 made the adjustment, grabbed it, and Stan Wood is in business with Man, 24 seconds that, left. That was a prayer. It's called a dying quail because that's exactly <laughs> what it looked like. Shot out of the air. 20, 15, 14. Bumgarner pass, drops pass, back. Pass, pass, pass. Nowhere to go. Fires the pass. Oh. This one goes about five feet after he is hit. He got hit as he was throwing it. And so with seven seconds left, yeah. one is, more try to heave this more. ball into the end zone. This is for pride, Tony. This is for pride. Nothing but pride, you know. Give it your all, Stanwood. Very good. Uh, courageous effort. I hey, got to hand it to you guys. Got to hand it to you. That's what I love about this game. High school, you know, it's pure. It's pure emotion, you know. And they play for pride. They play for their school, you know.
Well, John, at 14 to 7, Stanwood had a chance. Yes. But um, the bugaboo, mistakes, turnovers. Coulda, woulda, shoulda, didn't. Like I said. And we see Yasutaki, the younger, making his way up to the booth. No, you know, he's <laughs> Michael Yasutaki, the, the lesser. He's going to take the place of John Yasutaki, the greater. Thank you. This is, He'll be your color analyst for the upcoming game. Hey, Eastside Catholic, number one in the Metro versus Ferndale. I looked on the coaching list, and uh, one of the young men that coaches for Ferndale's Jake Locker. We all know that name, Jake Locker. I had a chance yes, to meet do. Jake a few years ago at the uh, homecoming game because uh, a, a friend of ours, Quentin QR, uh, Quentin Richardson uh, knows him, played with him, and he introduced him to me, and he said that was one of the fastest guys he's ever played football with. I said, what do you mean? He's one of the fastest white guys ever that played football, and, and Q could run too, Quentin. So, so here we go. Seven seconds left. Yep. Bumgarner in the shotgun. Uh, one one player on the outside, and it's a it's a pitch to Bumgarner actually. Bumgarner tosses it up towards the end zone. A couple players collide. There will be no flag. We are at triple zeros. Yep. The old day fighting Irish prevail. Forty two. The Stanwood Spartans twenty one. And O'Day will move on, on to the semi yep. finals. Semi finals. They'll be playing who? Prob they'll be playing, I think, the winner of Eastside Catholic, right? I'm not sure. Uh, I believe they will be playing the winner of Eastside Catholic. We'll, we'll, uh, Mr. we'll let Mr. Bella sort that out. Oh, yeah, okay. Well, he's for us when we What's get he going to go to Max Prep? So, <laughs> John, you're asking for it. Mr. Bellis is going to have the microphone. Yes, he is. And uh, thank you, everyone, for joining us. We're not going anywhere right no, now. No. We'll definitely be back for the Eastside Catholic Ferndale game. But right now, we're going to get a quick update from Mr. Daniel. I use Max Prep all the time, Bellis. Yeah, and if you look at that screen there, yes, O'Day moving on to the Final Four on November 26th. They will indeed take on the winner of our second game right here, yep, Eastside, Eastside Catholic versus Ferndale in a battle of league champions. And, John, that means we'll probably be right back here yeah, at Memorial Stadium. And what do you do when you have two Yasutakis? Both have worked games. John, you've on O'Day. Mike has worked Eastside Catholic, and these two teams will be facing each other. You'll have Yasutaki, the elder, and Yasutaki, the younger. Or Mike. 